Not long ago, the Miami Hurricanes won four national titles in a nine-year span. It's taken a while for the Canes to come back, but now they're ready to add another chapter to Miami's storied history. Today, they take on West Virginia. Volkswagen College Football Today is next on CBS. is glittered with championships at Miami, four national titles, but none since 1992. The wind is changing. Butch Davis and his Hurricanes are building strength, ready to return to the days of glory. But an early season stumble has taken some wind out of the Canes, and today they look to get back on track. But there's a storm brewing in West Virginia. Following a disappointing season a year ago, the blue and gold have left a black and blue path in this season of redemption. Don Nealon's bunch have reached back, regaining the pride and grit that characterized West Virginia football. Confident once again, these Mountaineers believe they can contend with the beasts of the East. It's Miami versus West Virginia, the Home Depot College Football on CBS. Nestled in the Appalachian Mountains since Morgantown, West Virginia. Better known on a football Saturday as Touchdown City. As this state's favorite sons, the Mountaineers bring their blue collar work ethic to the gridiron. In West Virginia, no conference rival is more feared than the University of Miami, which has regained its swagger and taken its place back amongst the nation's elite. Today in the hills of West Virginia, it's the Hurricanes and Mountaineers. And those hills of West Virginia are calling, and they're calling for the Mountaineers. And bring on 12th ranked Miami, the preseason favorite in the Big East. And hi, everybody. I'm Craig Bowler Jack, along with former Oklahoma QB Dean Blevins. Uh, welcome into Mountaineer Field. West Virginia rolls in today, Dean, at 2-1. and one. Miami at 1-1. One and one. They had to stumble against the Washington Huskies two weeks ago. However, they continue to talk about a national championship, and why not? They get all the offensive weapons they need. You know, I don't play cards, but I do know that aces are good. And this bunch has a lot of aces. You deal out five of them, and in football, an ace is a home run threat. You've got Santana Moss, the all-purpose guy, his counterpart, Reggie Wayne. The tailbacks, a trio of great ones. Jackson, the starter. Najee is the biggest, strongest, fastest. And Clintus Portis, West Virginia, tells us that he is the best. But clearly, the man on the spot is the guy dealing today, and that's Kenny Dorsey, the quarterback. Talented but young, inexperienced. He got rattled on the road at Washington. He'll have pressure again today. So the question is, with him, does he become the joker, or is he the dealer that deals out the cards to his aces and let them run wild. Maybe the wild card yeah. in this game. You know, West Virginia's best defense will be keeping Miami's offense off the football field. Mountaineers clearly want to run the football, and Dean, if they run, that means they run clock. You know, on average, they run it 50 times a game, and they pass it 21 times a game. And normally, they have a double threat. They have Avon Coborn here, one of the best all-purpose backs anywhere, and Cooper Rico, a slasher. He had a big game last week. But big news, Avon Coborn, we were told just moments ago after warm-ups, will not play today because of a foot injury. So that means that Cooper Rigo has to be the man today. Rigo and Coborn combined for an average 37 carries a day. So how durable can Cooper Rigo be today? That will be a critical question that has to be answered for West Virginia. 
Well, it's the second go around of Miami for Butch Davis. Was an assistant when the Canes won that national title back in 1987. He liked to win a national title as a head coach. Tom Nealon, Don Nealon never won a national title. Came close twice, 21 years at West Virginia. And yes, he is still going very, very strong. Weather conditions here in Mountaineer Field is 80 degrees, humidity high very high. There is a chance of showers, Dean, later in the afternoon. And you look at this series between these two clubs. This is the 16th meeting. Five of the last seven games. Eight points or less. Miami at 2-0. Impressive wins over McNeese State. 61-14. They lost at Washington. 34-29. Ken Dorsey, Dean, as you mentioned, will be the test today because he had a very, very an uh, unimpressive first yeah. half against the Huskies. West Virginia comes in, beating Boston College, knocking off Maryland. They put up impressive scores, 34 against BC, 30 against the Terps. Today they got Miami. This is the third straight home game for West Virginia. Yeah, well, they sort of needed it after last year having a bad season. Admittedly, Don Nealon will tell you it was no fun. They weren't any good. But they've changed things up defensively. They have a smaller lineup. They run around really well, and they will put pressure on Dorsey and see if he can handle it better than he did two weeks ago in their last game. Well, Miami will receive to start this game. Sellout crowd at Mountaineer Field. The kicker, Todd James, tees it up at the 38-yard line. And back deep is Andre Johnson and Daryl Jones. Much anticipation around West Virginia with this game. James with the kick, deep. Seven yards, eight yards deep, no return off the hands of Andre Johnson. Ken Dorsey, 19 years young. Now, the word is very talented, he's 6'5", got a tremendous arm. But West Virginia plans no welcome party. They know exactly what happened two weeks ago up at Husky Stadium. Well, he didn't handle the noise very well. I think that was the biggest thing. He, he was intimidated. It surprised me that he didn't know that you couldn't audible in that type of environment. And that's what he'll face again today. Two wide outs are Wayne and Moss. Both potential game breakers are going to run on first down. James Jackson on the pitch will try the right side and pick up a couple of yards. And again, this crowd continues to wail. Backs and receivers, Jackson McParlin, the fullback. Reggie Wayne and Moss, and the tight end is Ivan Mercer. Up front, McKinney, LaFair, Romberg, Bibla, and Joaquin Gonzalez. Gonzalez, a former walk-on, 6'5", 290 at the right tackle spot. Second down and eight. Lots of motion. Jackson again. Not much. Good downline pursuit. David Carter made the tackle. We set up that West Virginia defense up front. It's Davis up church and Antoine Lake. Lake is senior. The linebackers very good. Edmonds, Carter, Caden, and Wiley, the freshman. The secondary suspect with Bryant, Sherrod, Hackett, who will knock your hat off. And Brian King. Edmonds, the guy to keep your eye on. 41 is a flyer, and he's now moved from Sam linebacker to rush in. There he is. Three wide receiver set, third down and long. Santana Moss, the motion man. James Jackson bounces off a couple of tacklers, but not much to the 26. And Kyle Caden, one of the team captains defensively, makes the stop. Three up, three down. And as we mentioned, Dean. It's exactly the defense that West Virginia has to, to roll today. They've got to keep Miami off the football field. Well, in a conservative series called by Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator, and a good one at Miami, but uh, I think that he would prefer to be able to power it and not put the pressure on Dorsey. Capshaw punts it away, and underneath comes Antonio Brown, a game-breaker at the 36. Brown breaks a tackle, and then knocked down at the 32-yard line. Thirty seven yard punt and so the Mountaineers will start their first offensive series at the thirty two Brad Lewis is the quarterback great downfield range and you know the word on Lewis Dean a quarterback with a linebacker attitude uh, <laughs> you took some snaps at OU yeah 
I had a wide receiver attitude. <laughs> uh, this guy is a, a machine. He, the, the, the team loves him because he goes down in the weight room and he can lift as much as half the team can. He's a, he's a strong guy. Cooper Rigo, the lone tailback, three wide receivers on first down. No gain at the 33 yard line. Let's set that Mountaineer offense for you behind. The quarterback, Brad Lewis, he's got backs and receivers of Rigo. Wes Ars, 290 at the fullback spot. Ivy and Brown, and the tight end is Sean Burton. Up front, it's Wilson, Dixon, Gilliam, Cannell, and Tanner Russell. Don't be surprised to see the Mountaineers go deep early. Second down, 10 from the eye. Brown, the motion man. Little draw play, Cooper Rigo puts it at the 40, nice move. Up to the 44-yard line, a first down, 11-yard pickup for Cooper Rigo. 5'10", 190. Defensively, it is Joseph, Walters, Lewis, and Jamal Green. Linebackers of Weaver, Dan Morgan, a dandy at the middle spot, and Chris Campbell, the junior. Secondary, one of the best in the country, with Myers, Al Blades, Reed, and Mike Rumpf. Well, that was a rare time where you saw Dan Morgan out of place. He's in the middle this year, up to 245 pounds. Butch Davis, who's seen some great ones, says he's as good as I've ever seen. How about the speed? How many backers you yeah. know can run 4-4-40? Four, four, first down, West Virginia at the 44. Lewis, first pass of the day, going for the deep ball. Oh, Ivy tied up and incomplete. That's a deep one we were talking about, and I think that they want to make the Miami secondary realize that they're not going to just pound it play after play after play. They can't get into a situation where Miami brings that eighth guy into the box, brings one of the safeties down. They've got to make them have four deep and only have seven in the box. Saw Leonard Myers uh, with just great body position, too, on Corey Ivey. Second down, 10. Again, three wide receivers. Ours is the fullback, along with Cooper Rigo. Lewis, good protection, throws incomplete. Well, you saw the arm strength that time as he throws a bullet out to Antonio Brown. Back on covers was Rumpf. Yeah, Rumpf is a Rumpf is a great one. Uh, he, he actually was covered so well that ball should have been dumped off to a back coming out of the backfield. That brings up third down and 10. Terrific afternoon. A little humid. And it uh, may, may play a factor as this game wears on, but there's also a chance of thunderstorms. John Terry, Antonio Brown, Corey Ivey. They continue to rotate their wide receivers. West Virginia, third down and 10. Play clock winding down to two. He's got to hurry. Down to one. Just got it. Nope. They caught it. Flags are down. Young quarterback, you know, not in terms of age, but in game experience. And, and that's what you're talking about when you're talking about a quarterback. Uh, Dorsey was saying, you know, 19 is not a problem, but it's a lack of game experience. Same here with Lewis. You can't make that mistake. Referee today is Jim McConaughey. That ball, delay of the game on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. You know, Craig, it, when you come out of the huddle, the quarterback has a lot of thought process material to go through. His pre-snap reads, who, what, where's the free safety, et cetera. But he has to get his eyes on that shot clock, as we call it in basketball, the, the game clock here. You can't do that. Lewis again looking over that Miami defense. They put five men up front showing blitz. And off Rigo on the delay to lose a couple more back to the 34-yard line. Call it the 36. James Lewis, the free safety, came up to make the hit along with Blades. A conservative call, but one that I agree with Bill Legg. He gets some booze here as we see a run blitz, and they're able to hold that to no yardage. But you don't want to turn it over early to an explosive Miami team. Let your defense get back out there and see if they can shut them down again. Santana Moss pedals back inside his own 10 yard line. Moss blazing speed, dancing, and then knocked down. And I mean, knocked down at the 23 buck line. Good special teams uh, coverage by Kyle Caden. 57 yard punt, scoreless in West Virginia. We'll be right back. And that defensive huddle for Miami over the shoulder of uh, William Joseph. 
Both teams have had their first licks out there on the football field. Scoreless here in Morgantown. Miami, 12th ranked in the country. And a win today for West Virginia, Dean. Bottom line, they're going to get some votes. They may just pop in top 25. They'll be one of the stories early in this football season if they stay undefeated. This drive starts at their own 24-yard line. Dorsey throws it up and into the hands of it. Santana Moss. First down at the 43-yard line. Dean, let's take a look at our Exxon virtual playbook. Well, that was a tough throw. We're going to show you one we we're calling Moss Across. And this was the only completion that Miami had against Washington, where you see Santana will come in motion. And he cut, cuts back underneath. It's a shallow route. He actually uses that person, who's the umpire, as a scrape-off gentleman. And uh, you hit him in the flat, and he takes off, and rarely can he be caught. Didn't need to do a little hide and seek that time. They throw near side. Reggie Wayne makes the catch now with 27 straight games with a reception. Wiley made the tackle. Grant Wiley, a lot of talk about this young man, a redshirt freshman. And then you look at uh, where Ray Reggie Wayne is now. 27 straight games, 140 career. He's behind great names of Michael Irvin and how about Lamar Thomas at 144? And that's pretty good company. First down, Miami at the 46-yard line. Jumping through the pile, James Jackson. Here's a guy that lost a few pounds from a year ago. He told us, you know what, I was about 225. Coaches wanted me to take more punishment. But you know what, I couldn't I couldn't move as well. So you drop 10, he goes, I like it. I like the way I feel, I, I like the way that I run. And anytime you can get clock at 4, 3, 8 in the 40, I think coaches will smile with you. Yeah, he said, Edger and James is a friend of mine. I'm not Edger and James. Great players know the weight they should play at. Moss and Andre King, the two wideouts. And before the snap, flags come out. Good look at Dorsey. Had a great talk with him over the week. Doesn't talk like a 19-year-old. No, sure doesn't. That ball, ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. They pick it down. And then going back to Dorsey, you know, he was 4-0 as a starter against really lesser teams. He goes up to Washington, Husky Stadium, which is a very, very loud place, like like Mountaineers Stadium here today. Right. And he's, he's feeling the same thing he felt two weeks ago. Well, he's better prepared for it. Uh, his teammates came to his rescue at halftime up there. He played a better second half, and he's, he's had two weeks to get ready for this. James Jackson, he's been trying that right side all afternoon, and not much ball pops out, but it was down. No gain at the 47th. Lake and Wiley teamed up to make the stop. Well, West Virginia defensively here early, they are, Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, told me that it's sort of like a boxing match, a heavyweight fight. You don't come out, he doesn't want to come out in a flurry. He wants to feel out the opponent, but once he gets a good feel for it, he wants to get after Dorsey It's almost every play. Three wide receivers set, and now Dorsey. We'll call a timeout. Scoreless, Miami, West Virginia, 9-21 left in the first quarter. Craig Bowler, Jack, Dean Blevins, back in Morgantown, West Virginia. Hot ticket around the mountains of West Virginia for this one today, 65,000 and, and more. Third down and 11. Miami 0 for 1 today on third down conversions. D.J. Williams to the top of your screen as Dorsey rolls and fires incomplete. He had Reggie Wayne near the football, but overthrew. And that brings up fourth down. Hackett well, is giving I, coverage to Wayne. You know what I think happened there is that uh, in some other in a home game, maybe you check out of that. I, I don't think that was a good defense to run that play into. But Dor but. Uh, Dorsey learned last week, he says, I'm just going to go with the play that's called in an enemy environment, and that play should have been changed. First incompletion for Dorsey. Now two of three. Nice kick by Capshaw. Bounces into the end zone, and West Virginia will start their next drive at the 20-yard line. We'll take a break against scoreless in Morgantown. Miami and West Virginia. Don Nealon on your left, 21 years at West Virginia. Butch Davis in his sixth season as he retools, remakes 
the Miami Hurricane program. Talk about a good game on the field. These are two fine football coaches. Oh, they really are, and it tells you the lunacy sometimes of the, where this game has gotten because both of these coaches have caught heat. You know, after last week's game, yeah. the game the, with Miami, with the loss they had at Washington, his players were having to say that ah, the coaches are fine, and they. Don Needham was telling me they flew a plane overhead last year trying to get him out of town. It's crazy. Less hours in motion. Rigo at the 45 and stacked up. I mean, he hit him right in the numbers as Leonard Myers, a 25 yard gain, but that's the explosive and power that you will see from the legs of Cooper Rigo. Rigo may be better with the legs than his counterpart, but he has a nice job, nice hole up front, and he picks his way through very, very well. Watching the tape from the last game against Maryland when he had a big game, I thought that he really picked his way through well, and it helps when your guys up front open up holes like this. Dean, many coaches will talk about third and fourth gears. Rigo is one who's been labeled with a fifth gear. You can see how he kicked it into that fifth gear in a 25-yard gain. First down, West Virginia. Rigo again, not much as they try the middle. A two-year gain to the 47. And for an update on Wisconsin Northwestern, here's Tim Brando in New York. Craig, how about another Big Ten team biting the dust? A top 10 team at that. Damian Anderson in overtime wins it for Northwestern. That's six preseason AP top 10s that have all fallen with a loss. That in the second overtime, Badgers go down to Northwestern. And at Madison. Wow. T TCU hammered Northwestern last week. Huge win for Northwestern. Reverse coming around. It's Antonio Brown, but it was read nicely by the front of Miami. Al Blades, the free safety, made the stop. Well, here are the offensive goals that West Virginia has every time they go out to play. They want 60% completions. They believe that per attempt here, not completion, but per attempt, 7.5 yards, four yards per rush, and four or more plays of 20 plus yards. Those are considered just big plays. And so they got one of them a moment ago, and that yardage that Cooper Rigo picked up helped the average, of course, as well. Now they'll need another here on third down 11. First time we've seen the shotgun from Brad Lewis. Three wide receivers set. Lewis still in pressure. Throws. Incomplete. And right on the numbers of 21, Phil Braxton. And Dean, uh, I know you didn't throw the ball that much at Oklahoma, but when you have a man that wide open, come on. Uh, that was a wonderful throw. This will get Lewis off to a good start. Now, I don't know so much about the receiver here because that was not a very good performance by Braxton, but that ball was on the money, and it was there as soon as Braxton turned around. England at his own 30 low snap gets the kick away off the side of its foot. Santana Moss. from England and we've got a down Mountaineer off the side of its foot and Dean you don't do this you don't go shoelace to, to take a punt Santana Moss is smarter than that anyone who's up for the Heisman should not be guilty of something that dumb that's two games in a row Santana Moss has made a mistake well this special teams unit they have labeled themselves Dean the Black Hats a salute to the Mountain State and the coal miners and the Black Hats were all over that football. Swindle was there and then just a host of a host of Mountaineers on it. But we got an injured West Virginia player down at the goal line. You know, the special teams for West Virginia have been an adventure this year. And Don Nealon says, and how apt it is, that punting, is the, the punt play, is the most important play in football. So much can happen there. You can get it blocked, you can have it returned, or you can have that happen. Well, obvious concern for that young man, Richard Bryant. They hold his right arm, his right elbow. We'll try to get a report. 
as soon as we can on his uh, injury. He was down in on that pile as you look at Santana Moss who fumbled that punt return and now West Virginia goal to goal first down just inside the two yard line. Double tight end set. If I've got a 296 pound fullback I use it. Well, Rigo gets the start for the injured Avon Coborn and runs in his fourth touchdown. And look at the lead block by the 290 pounder, Wes Hours. You've got it right here. It is. That's the key to this play. 296 pounds, and we saw him eat the other night. He, he's not getting smaller, is he? No. <laughs> and the kick by Rao is through, and West Virginia capitalizes off the Moss fumble. Rigo rumbles and they lead by seven. Hometown team, West Virginia on the board, 7 0. With 7 16 left in the opening quarter. Four seconds it took, Dean. A coach will take that one play, one yard as Rigo danced in for the touchdown, his fourth of the season. Doesn't do much for the stats, but it does the scoreboard. And we showed you those statistical goals a while ago. All those go out the window if you accomplish the biggest goal, and that's to score more teams, score more points than the other team. Todd James having some problems. I don't know if the win looks like it's fairly calm, but it's uh, falling off the tee twice. Andre Johnson, Daryl Jones back to receive for the Hurricanes. I can't get over Santana Moss and the, the muck. High floater. Taken at the nine by Andre Johnson. Johnson stacked up, not much room, down at the 22-yard line. Again, big Wes Hours, the big fullback. Cooper Rigo will ride him into the end zone, following behind that big front line. It's doing a terrific job, Russell and Cannell and Gilliam. And Dorsey comes to the line, two or three, 30 yards early here, down by seven. DJ Williams at fullback in motion. Dorsey ducks to do his fullback. Nice catch. Big fellow rumbles. Take a shot at the 38. And first down, Miami. And for an update on South Carolina, Mississippi State. Let's go to New York, Tim Brando. Craig, here is your biggest story in all of college football so far this year. Eric Kimry coming in for an injured Phil Petty. A rainbow pass to Jamel Kelly. That makes it 2019. They've added a 33-yard field goal. Colts can take a team that lost 21 in a row and win four straight. Timmy, I agree. The biggest story, Lou Holtz, our former partner at CBS, doing miracles. Unbelievable story. James Jackson stopped. Turns on the motor again and bit in half around the 45-yard line. Lance Frazier made the tackle. West, West Virginia defensively has done a good job this year. Look at last year's numbers. Ooh, that is ugly. This year's numbers very good. They shut down Lamont Jordan. Lamont Jordan was a Heisman contender. No more. Allowing only 75 yards a game to the first two games of 2000. Second down. Hand off Williams. And D.J. Williams, a highly recruited player on a Concord, California. Linebacker with fullback ability. 6'2", 235, a redshirt freshman, and he's seen some early time here in this game. He is a stallion. He is a guy that some consider the number one recruit at any position coming out of high school last year. Great All-American, and he will be a big factor, factor for Miami sooner or later, and it looks like they have ideas on him being sooner. From the eye, first down, Hurricanes. Jackson shuffling the feet, trying to find just, he doesn't need much. He's a seam type of guy. You find a little daylight and he'll pop through. But so far, that 4-3-8 speed, unable to unload here in this first quarter. A pickup of maybe one. He's on that Doak Walker watch list. 
James Jackson, six carries on 12 for 12 yards. And some believe the third best yeah. at his position on his team. He's a neat guy, though. We had a great visit with him the other day. Good leg, a throw, the catch, D.J. Williams. First down, Canes at the 36. Wiley and Hackett chasing down. The thing that D.J. Williams gives you that Will McPartland, the starter, doesn't is this type of thing. Watch him get out in the flat. A little check on the blitz out in the flat. Linebackers can't get there. And he knows what to do with it once he catches it. He is a multifaceted guy, soft hands and big muscles. That's a good combination, yeah. Craig. You know, if you if you want to line him up in the slot, you can do that all day. He's got like the right. Frank White check body. Mm -hmm. Jackson wrapped up. Somebody lost a shoe. A loss of two. A strong safety is Hackett, and he hacked his way through for the tackle. Strong safety gets in on a lot of tackles here. Hackett will come up number 10 on your screen. He is really active in the secondary. He and Sherrod are very active back there. You know, we had a great talk with him earlier this week. Student of the game. Anytime you see a young man walk in with a, uh, a videotape and he says, what are you doing with that? I'm taking it home. I'm watching these guys. I never, I That's always great. watch it night after night. It helps. Moss in motion, winds up in the slot. Ball batted down, incomplete. That brings up third down. This is Tim Love, I believe, and he uses his 6-5 frame there at the end. Watch him over the guard as he will get his hand right up, right hand. If you can't get in, if, you're, if your offensive lineman does as good a job as was done on him right there by Lafeer, you're taught to get your arms up and try to deflect the ball, and that's what happened. Third down at 12. Moss, Wayne, and Johnson. Three wide receivers for the Hurricanes. Dorsey throws incomplete. Boy, right on the fingertips of Santana Moss. Some good blanket coverage by Hackett, and that brings up a fourth down at 12. This play's well defended, but it is a play that if it's thrown on the money, it's going to be there because underneath you get the separation from the speed from Santana Moss. Safeties have to play deep, and that's what you saw in Hackett playing off. So right there, there's a little cushion. Dorsey unable to be on the money. Capshaw will punt a 42-yard average on the day and a good boot. Takes a bounce two yards deep and a touchback. So West Virginia will start their next drive, leading by seven at their 20-yard line. Well, this fall on CBS, the most wanted man in America is innocent. Tim Daly and Michael T. Williamson star in The Fugitive. The chase is on in the most talked about new drama of this season. It premieres Friday, October 6th, right here on CBS. That was my favorite show oh. as a kid. Used to scare me to death. I used to have to watch Andy Griffith, and speaking of Andy Griffith, that's from around here, Don Knotts Boulevard. <laughs> that's right. I had to watch Don Knotts just to kind of chill out after watching The Fugitive as a kid. They also have Jerry West Boulevard here in Morgantown. I wonder how Jerry feels about that. You saw the clouds just kind of <laughs> surrounding the stadium here. Yeah. Hey, think about some rain. What possibly how that could change the tempo of this game. Read the eyes and in for six is Myers. I talked about the rain changing the tempo. How about that? Ooh, Leonard Myers, his second pick, rumbles 22 yards for the touchdown. Af extra point to come here in Morgantown. Well, what you have is a young quarterback and an experienced, terrific cornerback in Myers. This could be the best secondary in the country. Leonard Myers, not really the cover guy that Rumpf is, but he could start for almost any team in the country. First wow. interception thrown by Brad Lewis. Todd Seavers, and to try the point after. Myers, 22-yard pick. Seavers... The extra point is up and true, and we're tied at seven. From the end zone, we'll see Myers out here to our screen right, as Lewis should know better right there. You, you can't force that ball. Ivy's his receiver. He's his go-to guy, but he should have seen Myers, and Myers did a great job of jumping on this ball. He jumps the route right there. That's why he's a stud. You know, he's felt left out. He was the only guy in that secondary that wasn't all Big East second team, first team or second team last year, but uh, he is really special. Now one of two seniors, Myers, and then the other is Al Blades. 
But that's a way you turn a game around, as you saw West Virginia methodically just kind of moving the football down the field on the offense and come up with some big plays. But yet, it's been a muff punt and then a pick well, that basically led to the touchdowns in this football game. You know, many times it's the mistakes that really are the, the turning points in games. And this crowd now is, is silent. Nothing better could have happened to quarterback Dorsey than for his defense to score. Now his defense goes back out there and silence the crowd. Todd Seavers will kick from his 35 and back to receive for West Virginia. Is that potential game breaker? Sean Terry and Lewis Daniels. Officially, that was a 25 yard interception for the touchdown. No return. And so West Virginia will come right back on the field at the 20 yard line. And now here's the test. How will Lewis respond? Yeah, good point. Big, big series for Lewis and the Mountaineers. Lewis in this game today is 0 for 4. Seven seven here in Morgantown. You know he played quite a bit last year, but a good portion of it was mop up duty. There's a big difference between between being mop up and the man. Lewis to Rico. He'll lose one back to the 19 yard line. Dan Morgan not fooled. Shot through the gap and made the tackle. Cooper Rico. The pressure is mounting on him. Morgan untouched. And, yeah. There was no one there. Cooper Rigo will have a long day if he doesn't get any more help than that. Boy, Dan Morgan, uh, a freshman, was light and slight in build, and now he's bulked up to 245, making his 34th consecutive start for the Hurricane. What's that tell you? Durable? Yeah. Yeah, you said 4 4. He, said, he told us around 4 4 40 on the grass. One game shut down right now. Miami is smelling, and they are smelling it very well, led by Joseph and Quincy hit, uh, Hips. Well, Rico is a, is a guy, he says that uh, when people see my size, they don't think I'm as physical as I am. And that will be put to the test of today. They're going to have to spell him some, and they're not deep because they've, they've lost a couple of tailbacks behind him. They're going to have to go shotgun some to give him some relief. They'll have to put him on the flank some. And they have to put him on the bench occasionally. Third down and 16. Over two on third downs. West Virginia from the shotgun. Once again, Lewis. Flags come out. Well, the air just came out of this crowd. Yeah, it, it? did. Here's Jim McConaughey. That ball, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty for the line of scrimmage. They picked it down. You know, Craig, I know what it's like to play on teams that have great defenses because when you have it, not only do you not, it, it takes the pressure off. Not only do you not have to score as many points, but you can sit back and, and count on them for making big plays. And that's what the Miamis of the world are able to do year in, year out. Instead of third and 16, now third and 21. Three wide receivers set. Shotgun is Lewis. Good downfield coverage. Lewis wants to run, chased down, and dropped by Dan Morgan. No way Lewis is going to outrun a big guy at four, well, who runs the 4-4 four, four, 40. Yeah, it, it's never good when the guy chasing you is bigger, faster, meaner, and uh, the big thing is faster <laughs> because you're going nowhere. And, and you know what Lewis is thinking here, Craig, is I'm not going to be guilty of throwing another interception. So perhaps that's a wise sack if he couldn't throw it away. But out of the pocket, he could have thrown that anywhere, the new rule. England deep in his own end zone. You know that? He could have thrown that in, yeah. anywhere past the line of scrimmage and not been grounded. Low snap. England gets it away. Santana Moss settles underneath at the 48. Moss spins out of the tackle. Moss at the 40. And Moss. Gingerly steps out of bounds at the 36 yard line and giving chase was David Carter. He's limping left ankle. Watch the left ankle. It has tendonitis and it's a little bit oh. ginger. 
from uh, being nicked up. He was slowed at Washington, had one catch for seven yards. This is not a good turf to be playing on with a sprained ankle. It's been here for four years, and it does have some sponge to it, but it's very abrasive. He would prefer to play on grass. And when you're a stallion and you rely on your speed as much as Santana Moss does, it's not good to, to have a bad wheel. Well, he's checking those shoes, but yeah, you're right. You could tell, you could tell on the replay, though, sure. how many stops and turns and twists a player goes through in the yeah. course of a, a three and a half hour football game. We'll start this drive at the 49 of West Virginia. And they run the football, and the handoff goes off to 87 Reggie Wayne. They'll sneak that in once in a while. They set you up with James Jackson or Portis or Davenport at the tailback. But Reggie Wayne can run that football. Well, you know, he does a great job of it here, and he thought that he does a great job of eluding one tackler. If, it's, if his feet don't start to, if, if Wayne's feet don't grab up there on that turf, he goes the distance. And this guy may be the, the best other receiver in the country. What a great job yeah. they have at Miami. McPartland is in at the fullback spot. Davenport the tailback. Aaron Adon is Dorsey going for Wayne. Touchdown, Miami. Thirty-eight yards. And Reggie Wayne hauls down his fourth touchdown of the season. Perfectly thrown ball. Let's watch Dorsey. He needs a touchdown now. These last 15 minutes have been wonderful for him. His defense scores, and now he scores. Seavers in to try the extra point. High snap, good kick, up and through. And so down seven, the Hurricanes have roared back. 14 unanswered. The kick is away. It, it is good. Boston College wins. Last play of the ball game to the tight end, Brominski. He goes down. This kick is in the air. It is good. It is good. One of the greatest wins ever. Let that celebration begin. Boy, tremendous turnaround by Miami and Dean as we like take a look at this touchdown. A great throw. From Dorsey. Well, this is a senior on a red shirt freshman. Watch King now. He will stop whenever Reggie Wayne stops. He was behind anyway. But then when Reggie Wayne sort of stutter stepped, he stopped and Wayne got the separation and the ball was well thrown by Dorsey. Took two plays, 49 yards, 25 ticks off the clock. Dorsey now 5 of 8 for 98 yards here in the opening quarter. And there's still 48 ticks left on the clock. Seavers will kick away to Terry and Daniels of West Virginia. Man, did that interception turn this game around. Leonard Myers had the pick, 7-7. Dorsey to Wayne, 14-7. And again, the strong foot by Seavers and no return for West Virginia. All right, from the end zone here, we'll take a look at the touchdown. It's a play-action pass, but it's really just one-on-one -on, -one on the top there. On the left, you have King going against Reggie Wayne. Now, the ball's thrown, and King's trying to catch up, but he stops right there. Reggie Wayne stops, and you'd like to think that maybe he did that on purpose, but I think he misjudged it, and when he did, he was able to gain separation and thus the touchdown. Crowd trying to fuel this team back. Look at the passing yards. Mm. West Virginia has yet to uh, connect. Had a really negative 25, if you want to be honest about it, with an interception. Boy, Rigo is thrown out by Miami's front. Dropped for a loss back at the 18. The problem now, though, Craig, is that if you get into a must-pass situation, you have no chance. I mean, I mean this is a, a, a fast defense with a terrific secondary. You have to be able to run the football a little bit so that you don't have eight men that aren't overloading that box against the run. Final seconds of the first quarter. Winding down. So much emotion, so much in that first 12 minutes of this quarter by West Virginia. But now Miami has roared back. 
to lead by 14-7. That's the end of the first quarter. Hurricanes 14, West Virginia 7. We will return to Mountaineer Field right after this message and a word from your local station. Well, a very quiet Mountaineer field as the Hurricanes have roared back to put 14 on the board and lead West Virginia 14-7. We start the second quarter of play here. Corey Ivey and Antonio Brown set to the near side. Movement. And now flags fly. Boy, Campbell broke through like a, like a racehorse coming out of the gate. <laughs> That ball, encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. We mentioned the goals earlier for West Virginia in this game. Well, 60%, zero for four. My math right, that, that's zero. So that doesn't do anything for the passing attempts. And then two and a half yards on the 40, or excuse me, the, the four yard goal. So they haven't reached that one. And they did have the one long. So unsuccessful in that first quarter without that punt mark. It was a bad quarter. You're good on that math, by the way. <laughs> Indeed. Corey Ivey leans out, makes no. They're going to call incomplete. Incomplete. Let's get an update. Kentucky, Florida. Here's Tim Brando. Craig, if you were with us earlier today for the college football today, you heard Spencer Tillman talking about the vertical stretch of the Kentucky offense. How that? How's that for a little vertical stretch? Chad Scott from two yards out. Florida up 17 to 10 in the second. Back to Craig. They look like Inspector Gadget. You know how he just kind of. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was a lean, indeed. That's your own version of a vertical stretch. Total yards, Miami 131, West Virginia with 21. They look at third down. Play action as Lewis sets up and throws incomplete, nearly picked off by Al Blades, the free safety. And that brings up now a punting situation, fourth down and eight. Now those are calm eyes you're looking at on the surface, but inside his stomach is in a knot. Brad Lewis threw the interception for the touchdown that turned that game around early, and then that was a poor decision and almost should have been an interception in Miami's ball or a touchdown. Now a timeout taken by West Virginia. There may have been only had 10 on the field. Well, tonight on CBS, if you missed any episodes, any of the summer hit Survivor, you are in luck. Here's your chance to catch the television phenomenon of the year. It's Survivor, and you can see it tonight right here on CBS. I missed one of them. How about you? I, I saw most. I saw most. And after uh, at the first of the year, after the Super Bowl, it's down under Survivor. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of down under, we've uh, got some medals coming our way. Yeah, doing pretty well over yeah. there. Can't wait to see if Marion Jones can bring home five gold medals. You know, I think that you're right. I think West Virginia had to use a timeout because they only had 10 men in the field, which is a wise timeout. You can't afford to get a block, uh, a punt block. But it's another mistake for West Virginia in its special teams. They've had a, a slow start this season. Zach England back inside his own 10 yard line. His longest boot here in the first half, 57 yards. Santana Moss awaits the punt. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, off the side of its foot, and England whips off that helmet. Good field position for the Hurricanes when we come back. Well, Miami leads West Virginia 14 to 7. Craig Bullard, Jack Dean Blevins back with you. And Dean, you know what the worry for Miami was if they could somehow get through that first 10 minutes of the noise here in Morgantown. They weathered the storm. They're up yeah. by seven. Well, they were very poised. Uh, they answered the, the challenge. And I think now the challenge goes back to West Virginia because the momentum has swung Miami's way and West Virginia can't do anything. And do they have the poise to get back in? Well, they pitch it out to DJ Williams. Out of bounds, stops the clock with 14.40 left in the half. 
And Brian King makes the tackle. Oh, Dean, DJ Williams, we didn't think we'd see a lot of DJ, but he's been a very important factor in this uh, Miami offense. But, you know, we talked about Jackson. You talked about Najee Davenport. Clinton Portis, we've yet to see, who, who really wants more playing time. Now you throw DJ Williams in the mix, and again, the weapons continue to grow. Play action. Dorsey sets him free. There's a collision, no flag. Boy, Reggie Wayne was up on the ladder, but Lance Frazier put the blanket coverage on him. Wayne did not argue. I thought there might have been some contact. Yeah, I, I thought it was close. You know, what you see is Larry Coker, the coordinator, going at Frazier, who is in there for the first time. He is a freshman, and they're picking on him because he's a backup player. Bryant goes out with a wrist injury. They have the wide side of the field. He's a wide side corner, and he's got to play those great receivers. Double tight end set. Andre King, the lone wide receiver. They throw. D.J. Williams makes the great catch. 10-5 bounced out of bounds at the three-yard line. Wow. Did you see him pull away wow. after the reception? And you, you mentioned why he was, you just saw why he was one of the most highly recruited players at any position in Cali, in, in, out of high school. Well, any position because they don't know where he can play. He can play every, watch him separate here. That is a burst of speed, and he gives them a new element. When you have a weapon like that at fullback, we need to add a sixth ace to the deck. I think, yeah, I think so. Davenport tripped up around the one-yard line. I'll bring up second down and goal. Boy, if there's any way West, West Virginia could come up with something and get a turnover from, from Coach Nealon, this is greatly needed because this thing has turned so quickly, they're going to be down two if they don't watch out. Two touchdowns. Second down and goal as you look at it. One yard from pay dirt. On the rollout, Dorsey incomplete. Yeah, just throw it away. That's, that's what we talked about a while ago. If you're outside, new rule this year, if you're outside the tackle box, you can throw the ball away anywhere as long as it's downfield. And that's what Dorsey chose to do there. I was just going to say, Compare that to what he did in the first half two weeks ago up at Husky Stadium. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the opposite decision, the opposite result. He's a fast learner. He is. Third down, pitch, Najee, Davenport, trying out run. Yes. Virginia's defense could not turn the corner. Here's a guy that rehabbed a torn ACL a year ago against Ohio State in that kickoff classic. He has blazing speed, but not able to turn it around the corner this time. Well, and uh, Najee is such a big, powerful guy. You've got to have a, a several defenders out there laterally moving down the field, and they do. Terrific play by Hackett on the tackle. Oh, Lance Frazier got down low on the thigh pads and took the legs out. Fourth down goal in Miami. We'll go for it. Biggest play of the game so far. Dorsey throws it. Reggie Wayne, the intended receiver. You talked about a big play for Don Nealon. Butch Davis gambled. Fourth down. It's now first down, West Virginia. Well, and Butch Davis is saying right now, gosh, he, he's there. You've got to hit the man. Dorsey a little anxious, I think, here, Craig, because his man is open. He overthrows that, and it gives West Virginia the chance. And Butch had six that goes the other way. I like the call, though. I mean, Larry Coker is a balanced guy. They, they, they run pass about the same, and, and people thinking run here. He throws it. West Virginia has run seven plays. Minus 12 yards, and they are backed up on their own goal line, and they just do the simple handoff straight ahead, trying to get some breathing room, and why not give it to Wes Hours? 6'1", 290, a senior. We had a chance to have some dinner with him. We kind of kidded him about his uh, his meal, his his diet. This is what he told us. Breakfast, I have one bowl of cornflakes. For lunch, I have two chicken breasts, boneless with green beans, and dinner, just spaghetti and bread. Well, I'll tell you what, Wes, 
You had a little bit more than that yeah. a couple of nights ago. Yeah, he went to a, what, a, a local diner and uh -huh. had a cow. <laughs> <laughs> a cow and then some dessert <laughs> and a couple of chickens. <laughs> Not much, but at least the Mountaineers are breathing. Myers and Clark team up to make the tackle on Antonio Brown. You know, West Virginia is known as a conservative type offense. We've talked about the run pass ratio being almost three to one run. Let me but check that real quick. Corey Ivey making that yeah. catch. Last week, though, they they had to, to come out of their end zone a few times, make some critical throws downfield, play action. They did there. They had him back in the end zone. Good protection. Third down and two. Two wide outs to the far side. Now they stack that far side with three wide receivers on the rollout. The catch. Here we go. Hurt footsteps. Now don't blame don't blame Lewis. Cooper Rigo was trying to turn the corner just about a half a step before he had possession. Well, I like what they did. They moved three people simultaneously, which you can do as, as long as you get set. Try to catch the defense off guard. It was drawn up on the play on the blackboard perfectly. Lewis says, ah, I got one. No. That's a play where Coborn would have come in handy. Yes. Fourth down, punting situation for West Virginia. Santana Moss. At the 44-yard line. Moss heads to the near side and dances out. Not trying that ankle right there at the 45. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot College football will continue after this word from your local station. Miami leads West Virginia by seven. Last time the Hurricanes had the football, a missed opportunity, Dean, on fourth down. Well, West Virginia gets away with this one because Reggie Wayne was open. So they got away with that. Good defense. Good defense here against Maryland last week. A critical play on fourth down. Ron Vanderland and the coach from Maryland says he strongly disagrees with this call of no touchdown. And Coach Vanderland and also had problems with the play a couple of plays earlier he thought were in, but the referee said no, and West Virginia took it 99 yeah. yards and clinched the game. 30 to 17, the final. 11-29 left here in the first half. Hurricanes up by two. Davenport with a high hurdle to the 43-yard line. Chris Edmonds made the hit along with Sean Hackett. Najee Davenport, 6'2", 235-pounder. He's a Miami product out of Central High School. I remember being on the field first night he played and looking at him as a freshman specimen. You just go, oh, wow, what's yeah. he going to turn out to be? Well, he made a remarkable recovery from that ACL injury yeah. against uh, the Buckeyes. First play, wasn't yeah. it? Real early in that game, kickoff classic. Ivan Mercer, the tight end in motion again. Davenport finds a little seam, tripped down at the 39. Well, test your sports knowledge to play AFLAC trivia. All you have to do is log on to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online and the keyword CBS Sportsline. Test your knowledge. I see some blue skies. That's good. We've had some nasty weather not far from here. North and south of Morgantown. Well, they, they, they had to stop the game up in, before it started at... Uh, was it Columbus today? Penn State was up there. Miami one of five on third down conversions. Davenport in motion. Third down and six. Dorsey throws. It was hot and it went to Virgi West Virginia. And up with the football, Lance Frazier, who's had to come in for Bryan after the injury. John Hackett made the hit. This is the underplay we showed you a little bit earlier, this time coming from left to right. Santana Moss has that long enough to be a completion, and West Virginia's defense is keeping them in the game. And I hate to say that the Heisman chances are over for a player this early in the season, but I'm going to say it. I think his Heisman chances are over. He has not played well. Had one catch at Washington, fumbled there, the muff punt, and now this. Hour 
Rivers and Rigo in the backfield. The motion man Brown. Cooper Rigo trying to slash his way through traffic to the 32 yard line. Those are hard yards, Dean, for Cooper Rigo. You know, last week against Maryland, he ran free, 114 yards, a couple of touchdowns. And as you mentioned, he says, hey, I am physical, and I have good speed, and mm -hmm. Tim carries 27 yards. Well, for one thing, he's running against a defensive line that includes a guy by the name of Damian Lewis. You'll watch him 92 and White, who is just an all-world player. He's just not had many opportunities today. You've got to have a little bit of a crack there to, to gain any yardage. No gain on the play. Second down, 10. On the rollout, Burton, the tight end, makes the catch, but that's what you call a yard the hard way. The strong safety, Edward Reed, made a nice read on Burton. That's too slow. I mean, against a fast defense like this, you cannot have slow developing plays. And Burton is not a speedster and matched against the secondary of Miami. He's going to lose that foot race. They could run backwards. Burton takes over for a great tight end, Anthony Beck. Yeah, and you know, they think Burton's going to be really yeah. good. They think he's already uh, as good a blocker and has the chance to be even a better receiver. And Beck was a top draft pick. Three wide receivers, Lewis 0 for 5. Game tackled at the 46 yard line. Buchanan and Reed makes the tackle for Miami. But oh boy, you talk about explosive on that first step. Well, we said all he needs is a crack, and Cooper Rigo gets one here for the second time in the game. They go straight up the gut. That opens up. Linebackers can't close. Well, I like the dry block by the center, Rick Gilliam. Gilliam's a good player. I mean, he is a really big one. He's about 330 pounds, number 69, but he is a good one. They line Rigo up to the near side, so not a back in the backfield. Watch out for the pitch. Here it comes to Antonio Brown. He's got to block it. Brown steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. And Edward Reed gave him chase. We saw them run this in practice, and I don't think it's going to be the last time we see it today. There's a couple of twists to yeah. this particular play. They have some wrinkles off this. This is the play they run a lot, though, and what they do is try to occupy the safety. And Brown, number five here, is, I'll tell you how fast he is. He went from spring football with no track to speak of and goes out and loses to Santana Moss. I think it was a 60 indoors where Santana won in the Big East. He lost by just a fraction. From the eye, second down and short. Brown, they take it one way and go the other. Stiff arm is regal. Bounces around, second effort to the 22. Yeah, now they have some momentum. They're, they've got Miami guessing what they're doing, and I kind of like these plays they run. It's sort of like a, a wing T formation, except the quarterback is under center. He has the option of handing it off, going there. He has those two options. There's also the option for the quarterback to go around the corner and to pass, and all options working now, Craig. You know, Dean, the offensive coordinator, Bill Leg, you have, this is his first year, by the way, an, an old offensive lineman who comes in and is now calling plays and setting this offense up, but I like the way you're, you're right, misdirection. He's making Miami go one way, think one way, and, and West Virginia counters the other. You can't outrun them. They think the pitch to Brown. Good set up. They and it's dropped by hours. Oh. Big yards, maybe a touchdown for the 290-pounder. And you say 290-pounder, you're not supposed to catch really balls. You shouldn't expect it, but this guy can. I mean, he's athletic. Leg said, I recruited him as a fullback. He has soft hands. This play set up perfectly. Not many times in a game do you have a play that's that open, a chance to go for a touchdown, but toss sweep. Nope, come backside. Not only does ours have a chance to catch it, but two blockers in front. Missed opportunity. Flag was down. Repeat the down. Jim McConaughey uh, stating 
an eligible receiver downfield. Well, tomorrow, doubleheader day here on CBS. New England, Miami, Tennessee, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Baltimore. The game, the game everyone's talking about. The Jets in Tampa Bay. The battle of the unbeatens. It all starts with the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. Jim Nance and the guys. And don't forget, Marcus Allen is going to have a one-on-one -on -one with Keyshawn Johnson tomorrow. Interesting, his old team. Yeah, that group right there only needs about two more guys. They'll have a team. <laughs> Somebody lost a hat. It's still rolling down on the 20-yard line. And they're yeah, good. He's okay. You always wonder. You always wonder. <laughs> What's in that helmet? William Joseph, number 94. <laughs> Joseph, a big, strong guy here. I believe he's starting at that position. And we say big, strong. We mean a six, five and a half. And nope. The other side, in the middle. Joseph's a 295 pounder, though. And Second down and 13. Play action. Flags are down. Lewis on the run. Kane's giving chase, and Lewis showing smarts of a quarterback who says, I better get out of town. He dodges and is out of bounds at the 17, but a flag down. Yeah, Butch thinks it's holding and probably is. Mountaineers shooting themselves in the foot. Those yellow flags will slow down momentum, won't they? Quiets the crowd. Once again, Jim McConaughey. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. All holding ten yards. And they were looking just a moment ago when Wes Hours had that ball almost in his grasp at uh, six points or down inside the five yard line and now they're all the way back to the 40. Second down at 20 that actually turned out to be a 15 yard penalty right from, from the, the spot. So they at the, they were back five yards behind the line and then tack on 10 more. Two wide receivers to the far side to go the lone back on the option. Lewis turns it up. Brad Lewis at the 29 but a flag back at the 39 yard line Howard Clark made the tackle really struggling here with the lack of execution although the play was executed well if I assume there was some holding mm. you know Washington was very effective Craig against Miami with option football to Yasopo came out of high school and was really good at it and so Rick Newhiles was letting him do that up at Washington and Bill Legman on the offense 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul repeat the down. Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator here, said, you know, we're not an option team, but uh, we may have to throw a little bit in to keep them off balance because it worked for Washington. Nadine, you ran the option. You ran the bone at Oklahoma. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's an art. Well, it's an art, and if you remember correctly, it worked almost all the time, except Miami made it a messy art because of their team speed. Yeah. You have to be able to throw the football, and even the greatest wishbone teams, if they couldn't throw it, they couldn't be successful with option. Three flags, 30 yards against West Virginia. Cut in the grass, but throws incomplete. Joseph really coming down hard with pressure, and Wes Hours in the vicinity, the intended receiver for West Virginia. Well, there's third and long, and then there's third and impossible. This would <laughs> go into the ladder, and they've had this several times this year. You know, their third down conversion percentage is not very good. It's 23%. Their goal is to have it around 45%, but they've had several times this season that they've had third and 30. Did you ever get a third and 38 option call? Uh, yes, sure did. Actually, would convert a couple. <laughs> When you pitch it to Joe Washington, yeah. you got a good chance. That's what it's all about, speed. They set up the screen pass, Rigo at midfield. Little cut, falls at the 42. Boy, for a moment, West Virginia had some room, but Miami able to close in a hurry. And that brings up a punting situation again with 6-16, and the clock runs. Hurricanes by 7. What a disappointing finish to that series for West Virginia, Craig, because they had Miami on its heels, the misdirection, the, everything in the play, playbook was working, and then penalty, penalty, penalty. 
Santana Moss at the 10 yard line, little poop punt. High hanger. No return and about five yards deep. And so Miami will start at their own 20 up by seven when we come back. The Mountaineers and the Hurricanes. Tim Brando in New York. Coming up with the AXA Halftime Report, Spencer Tillman and I will get you caught up on a wild and woolly day of upsets in college football, including Damon Anderson with this touchdown run in the second overtime to lift Northwestern past Wisconsin. Now back to your game. Miami on West Virginia by 14 to 7, 550 left here in the first half of play. Well, with the lack of offense from the Mountaineers, they can't afford to spot Miami another touchdown. I mean, the Mountaineers have less than 100 yards total offense at this point, and we only have five and a half to go. Evan Mercer in motion to tight end. Yeah, Jackson hit right on the numbers and driven down by Hackett. Well, he told us in our meetings, you know what? I will hit you, and I will hit you again. If you keep coming at me, I'll hit you again. Well, that's the thing you see if you watch them on film or watch them live. They have people in the secondary that will attack you. Yeah. They don't have the experience. They don't have the speed or talent of Miami. You've got to make up for it somehow, and they will stick you. That was the first carry by Clinton Portis, who this past week made some uh, made some statements about I'd like to be more of a part of this uh, Miami offense. We got a chance there with one uh, carry and a nice catch by Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne makes a reception. Well, next week on the Home Depot College Football, number five, Virginia Tech on, on action, along with Florida and Mississippi State. That's next Saturday, 3 o'clock Eastern, with a Home Depot College Football, and it's the head Hokie, Michael Vick, a Heisman Trophy on his mind. 412 yards passing, four touchdowns, and he can also, also make the big rush. Again, Porta stacked up and then dropped after a one-yard gain at the 33. Kyle Caden led the charge. You need to remember for West Virginia that they have a, a good player out. They have no depth in the secondary. Bryant is still out with a wrist injury. He's the wide side corner, and he's been replaced by Frazier. And I think you can look to see Miami exploit that. Now you look at the total yards, more than two to one in favor of the Hurricanes. Second down and nine. Dorsey floats it over the middle and complete. They wanted Santana Moss, but again, they continue to pick on Frazier, the freshman, and a Delray beats Florida because of the injury to Bryant. Hey, that's a great play by him. You know, he's going against as good a receiver as you're going to have and the, as fast a one as you'll ever have. And, here, Frazier, the great thing that he does on this ball is that he breaks on it. He realizes that it's just as much his right to go for that ball as the offensive player. Watch him break. Third down. Wayne and Moss. Dorsey is 8 of 15 for 139. You see third down conversions, 1 of 6. They swing it out of the backfield. Not much as Clinton Portis leans for a couple to the 35. Caden tracked him down. And that brings up a punting situation. Under four minutes left in the half, so West Virginia will at least get one more offensive series, down by seven. And they'll have a chance to put points on the board, perhaps even go in tied, and after a half that so far they're under 100, and they gave up the interception for the touchdown. Up for grabs, taken down, good field position at the 32. Well, the Black Hats, the special teams of West Virginia for the second time today, making the big play. Well, it's an all-out rush. They're not thinking return. They're bringing everyone. James too many, Davis. Too many men for... Miami to block. And that's called selling out. You remember when you play, that's you're selling out when you fly at the 
football like that, and that was a great angle. Davis made the block. Terry gathered it in, and West Virginia knocking on the door, and they have a lot of time left here before the half. 3.28 remaining. They fake the reverse. Pushed out of bounds. Miami, great read defense by Dan Morgan. I mean, that was a, a dipsy and a doodle, and then Brad Lewis tried to turn the corner, but Morgan with that great speed at the middle spot could not turn and gain yardage. Well, and the problem with it is that that was one of their gadget plays. They, they hadn't shown that before, Craig, and, you know, we've talked about uh, the man coming in motion and the options you can present, but they were really hoping that they could get the quarterback on the wide side of the field, just like they had it set up right there, but it was very well defended. You know, there's still another twist to that play. Yes, sir. Three wide outs and suck it down. Call it 14 from the eye. Lewis changing things up with five seconds on the play clock. Takes the snap with three. A little quick hot read. And quick at the ground. Turns it on. Steps out of bounds. Smartly stops the clock with 315 left. Mike Lum makes the tackle. Well, you, you know, Lewis looks out there and he sees that he has man on man. It's one on one. And even though he's with a terrific cornerback, this little guy, five, is a jitterbug. I wouldn't want to have to play touch football against him, much less tackle <laughs> in that situation. You know, they ran him 10 times in the 40. 10 times, Antonio Brown. His average, 4.18. Well, I've never heard of anyone that fast, but just hearing those times tells me that he's really fast. Yeah, let's just say he's he's fast. Yeah, he's track fast. Lewis now 4 of 12 for only 24 yards. Rigo up the middle, close to the first down, past the 25 to the 24, Morgan again. We have called his name many times. Interesting proposition here. This has not been a good field goal team. They, they just haven't kicked the ball well. But uh, on fourth and short, Don Neeling saying, let's get points. That's the most important thing at this point. Well, it's Oliger, John Oliger, a senior. He's hit three of four field goals. Those will be marked at the 32, so a 42-yard kick. And the kick is away long enough. And good. That looks pretty good. Officially 41 yards. West Virginia closes the gap to four. West Virginia trailing Miami by four, 237 remaining. We look at the scoring drive. Oliger hits from 41 yards out, four plays, eight yards. You know, the Oliger brothers are here. Jesse is the backup punter now at Miami, and John just kicked that field goal. Great story. They're from Newark, Delaware. They played for Bill Berge, the former linebacker for Philadelphia. Their mom flies a helicopter, and she sometimes lands right over here to our right in the parking lot. And that is a Caribbean developer, so quite a family there. Oh, she wow. speaks eight languages and is working on a nine. Only, only eight, but going on nine. That's right. I wonder if she wears a Miami hat and a West Virginia a sweater. <laughs> I don't know. Long kick, going to bring it out. Andre Johnson, five yards deep. Johnson at the 20. Johnson at the 26-yard line. Well, coming up on the AXA Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, two of the best, have all the scores and highlights, plus the latest college football news and plenty of it today. Big upset they'll talk about. That's all coming up on the AXA Halftime Report. Yeah, it's great to watch them, and uh, you never want to miss that because you can be out all day, or you can be at a game and come home and wonder what's happening. You can get caught up in all of it. Ten minutes. That's Just right. Like that. Miami with a four-point lead, 226 left in the second quarter. Dorsey wants to throw complete. And that's to Jeremy Shockey, a sophomore from your part of the country, Ada, Oklahoma. Yeah, it's a great high school football area. This is a young guy that uh, has the size at 6'6 to be really good. And Larry Coker, the coordinator, says he thinks he will really be a good one. He is kind of a, more dangerous on the seam route than Mercer, a bigger, stronger Got good in the flats. 19 years old, Dean. How do you like being 19 and weigh 245? <laughs> huh? James Jackson breaks it to the 40. First down, Hurricanes, Sherrod and Hackett. Made the tackle under two minutes left in the opening half here at Morgantown, West Virginia. 
Well, Miami has two timeouts left. They have plenty of time at 148 to go here, and they are such a diversified offense that they can get in the end zone with any different number of things because their backs are so explosive. Andre King, Santana Moss, your two wideouts on first down from the 40. Clock is running. Dorsey sets and throws. Sideline up on the ladder, incomplete. Boy, tough, tough play. Andre King made the catch, but Brian King was back on coverage. Redshirt freshman. And this redshirt freshman passed the test here using the sidelines as another defender. He knows that if he comes down with this one, he's out of bounds. That's terrific defense. Second down and 10. Dorsey now 10 of 18, 145 yards. Sets up the screen. Little fumble, but it's brought down by Portis. Portis at the 50, 45. And Clinton Portis, first down, Hurricanes at the 42. West Virginia was holding its breath on that because Portis is a guy, he reminds me of a, a smart Marcus Dupree. I, I think people will remember Dupree, a guy that every time he touched the ball was a threat to go all the way. And Portis is that kind of guy. Well, last year against this team, he ran for 104 yards and a touchdown from the shotgun. Dorsey to the sideline, Santana Moss. Moss to the 35, taken down by Lance Frazier. And Dean, here's what Portis did as a freshman a year ago. Well, he's a threat. That one was easy. And that one was pretty easy, too. Both of those touchdowns coming in the fourth quarter in an eight-point game, 28-20. You know, in both of the last two ball games between these two clubs, it's been close. Last year, 28-20. West Virginia led, though, by 13 at the half. And then the last time in Morgantown, two years ago, West Virginia had a 24-17 lead at the half. And Miami came back to win that ball game 34-31. Well, and some people say that the uh, devastating loss that West Virginia took here to the Miami team that got the, the late block, yeah. uh, 96, I think it was, all they had to do was get the punt off. And Miami got the punt block at 30 seconds left. They got the touchdown. And, some people say that West Virginia really has trouble, has had trouble coming out of that hole. Good look at Butch Davis. He knows about championships. 1-1 one, one as an assistant in 87 here, and then won a couple of Super Bowls a, as a Dallas Cowboys assistant. And if his team has any chance of a national championship, they must win. Dorsey, the next slides past the tackler and burns it past the 20 to the 18-yard line. First down, Hurricanes have it going. Less than a minute left on the clock. Grant Wiley made the tackle. Well, they have West Virginia confused right now. Pass, run, draw. It's exactly where you want a defense, and Dorsey has them backpedaling. Portis is the lone back. Little delay draw. A couple of tacklers missed and walking it in. Portis, touchdown! Now that was an impressive drive in a little bit more than a minute. And they only used one of their timeouts and probably didn't have to use that. We talked about the draw. They come back to it. They get seal blocks and Portis. The dangerous guy he is, he lives in enemy end zones. Todd Seavers will try the extra point. Kick is up and away and through the uprights. Clinton Portis did not play in that first quarter. He's getting plenty of carrying time here as he makes the cut and he turns it in for six. Portis explosive on the touchdown run. He has a stunt coming here. That stunt unsuccessful. And then the safety right back here over pursues. He's not in position. Doesn't have a good angle on Portis, who's a speedster. And he gets it in. 17-yard run officially in less than two minutes. They go 73 yards on just seven plays. They didn't break a sweat doing that. Seaver will kick away from his own 35-yard line. 44 seconds left in this uh, 
track meet here <laughs> in Morgantown. Well, we were thinking 35 30 or so yeah. for, for the winner. I don't know that the defensive coordinators were thinking that. They've got explosive return men for West Virginia. They're just standing at the two yard line. Receivers little bounce kick taken at the 28. And a safe play by the Hurricanes respecting that speed of West Virginia's return man. Knapp. Covered up for West Virginia. Well, you do that and people wonder why you do that. Well, you just take away the, the chance of, of anything big happening. I mean, you're not going to lumber in 70 yards kicking it to linemen. Well, timeouts remaining. West Virginia with two if needed. Miami has one remaining. And this is a tough task for the quarterback because Miami's so good in the secondary. The first thing you do is you don't want to give up points. From the eye, they hand it off to Rigo. He's had tough yardage here in the first two quarters. To the 42, hit by Myers. Fans aren't going to like that. You hear a few boos coming out. Timeout, West Virginia. Second down and five. Don Nealon's over there saying, you know, guys, that was one of the same plays that Miami just ran against us. The only difference is they busted it loose for 20 yards and we get four and we get booed. So we'll take the time out, see what we can do with the time remaining. Good look at the eyes of Brad Lewis, a junior. You know, he started three games last year. Right. For the injured Mark Bulger. And many thought that was just in a way a blessing in disguise because it gave him great and much needed reps but then spring came and he did not have a good spring yeah and a young man named Scott McBrien a redshirt freshman and a Rockville Maryland really pushed Brad Lewis he came back worked the entire summer with his O line his D line in the weight room he got together with Antonio Brown Corey Ivy and he really solidified himself as a starter here yeah and he lost that 10 pounds I yeah. think you mentioned earlier and he's, he's getting a better feel for things Second down and five, Antonio Brown in motion. Lewis play action, steps in the pocket, pumps and throws, incomplete. Corey Ivey was streaking down the far sideline, and that stops the clock with 21 ticks remaining. And that brings up third down and five. Corey Ivey basically shut down in this first half. You talk about a good story. Corey Ivey is what college football is all about. Here's a kid who came out of Boca Raton and had big visions his scores test scores weren't quite high enough so he had to he thought he was going to sit out a year he ended up taking the test and improved by 100 points and they said no that's too much and we'll finish that in a moment that was at Tennessee Brown in motion and off here we go stuff no game brings up fourth down William Joseph crashing down from that right end spot and he ends up driving up here. What did he tell us the other night? 20 hours? 20 hours with mom and dad. Had yeah. a connection and said, you know what? He missed it, uh, most of two a days. And that's how Corey Ivey got to West Virginia. And the best part of it is he's playing the, an extra year because he was able to meet the requirement from the NCAA as being a partial qualifier. He graduated in four years. In four years, so he gets the extra year. I say he shouldn't have ever been a partial qualifier anyway. Now he's gone full circle. Yeah. So with 16 seconds left here in the half, Don Nealon uh, getting ready to sprint to the locker room. His Mountaineers down 11. Smart by Miami to make them punt. Santana Moss at the 15, low snap, able to get it away, a wobbler. Boy, punting has just been a trouble spot in this first half. Well, Down to around the 27. And that's the snapper. I mean, they have just had so many problems with the snapper. Terleski has been really good in practice. And then the snaps in the games have been on the ground, and then one will fly over the punter's head. 28 yard kick eight seconds before we break for halftime stand by for the halftime report.
Timmy Brando, Spencer Tillman. Under center is Dorsey. He'll take a knee. After a slow start, Miami with some big plays, and they lead here after the first half, 21 to 10 over West Virginia. We now take you back to New York City, and here's Tim Brando. Timmy. All right, coming up on the AXA Halftime Report, we'll get you caught up on a huge day of college football from the lows in Madison to the highs in Columbia after this word from your local station. AXA Halftime Report is sponsored by AXA Advisors, building futures. And it's only September. Hello again, everyone. The AXA Halftime Report rolls on with the score in Morgantown. Miami leading West Virginia 21 to 10. Tim Brando alongside Spencer Tillman. In this game, Dorsey's getting it done in the air. You talked about uh, the inability of West Virginia to really get it done in the air, and obviously that's been a problem for them today. Yeah, the key is you've got to be able to pass. And if you can't run, you can't pass. Brad Lewis is shell shock right now, Timmy. That Miami defense swarming all over the field, causing them problems. Just 4 of 13 for Brad. You know, you've got to get better if you're going to be successful against Three of the last month. four meetings, by the way, in Morgantown have been settled by three points, so it could get close in the second half. Let's get you caught up now on some of the other scores today. <laughs> We've got some wild ones. Florida just scoring every time they touch the ball. 38-17. No need for Jabbar Gaffney in the first half. Well, obviously, the throat slashing deal was a problem, and Steve Spurrier made him sit. But here's Lawrenson stretching that defense of Florida. Yeah, we talked about how important that was. He does a great job striking the nice court with Quentin McCord there. And then uh, Florida falls up two touchdowns early in the second quarter. That's uh, Robert Gillespie, who got set down prior to this game, but he's doing the job today. I think Steve Spurrier is a happier camper this week. What do you think? 38-17, time winding down in the second. Nebraska rolling over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes actually doing a pretty good job making 21-13, but Eric Crouch he does have three touchdown passes in the game. So Iowa doing all they can to stay close. Kansas State 55-10 over North Texas. Quarterback Jonathan Beasley, a school record, five rushing touchdowns on the day. UCLA and Oregon. Boy, the quack attack. A tough out when you play in Eugene. Joe Harrington getting it done here. Yeah, he's got him hunkered down there on defense, so instead of taking it right up the middle, he just finds a little void there on the outside and just does the job trying to poke it in there. And then, you know, here's what happened. Here's the problem with the option game. If it's not a staple of what you're doing offensively, you run the risk of this handling. I mean, this is Deshaun Foster. This is their go-to guy, but he loses the handle on a Ryan Mitchell recovering there to stop the drive. We see another top-10 team fall by the wayside today. 10-0 Oregon now. Clemson, number 11. Hopefully with a bullet, but having a tough time with the Wahoos right now. 17 to 10. Woodrow Dantzler has one touchdown pass on the day. Well, Tennessee taking on Louisiana Monroe, formerly Northeast Louisiana University. This is one of those take one for the uh, bank and take it back to Monroe because it's going to be a tough out. This fumble here picked up in the air by Andre Lott. And uh, Tennessee is rolling. And here again is what A.J. Sykes can do with that horizontal pass. That's again. right. Progressing nice. There's still a high percentage stuff here. But for Eric Parker, he helped them out here. Just a jaw-dropping move. 68-yard touchdown. Tennessee led this thing 21 to nothing. Louisiana Monroe has lost uh, 11 straight games against ranked teams by an average of 33 points. Tennessee rolling right now in the second quarter. Notre Dame and Michigan State. The boys in East Lansing fell down early in this game, but T.J. Duckett having a nice performance. Already 103 yards and a touchdown on the afternoon. Rutgers and Pittsburgh 23 to 7. Walt Harris's team just continuing to get it done, and today they're doing it in front of Dan Marino as they celebrate that 11 and 1 team that played back in 1980. Coming up, we'll continue our look at the rest of today's action, including a shocker at Wisconsin and Penn State's disastrous Big Ten openers roll on. When the AXA halftime report continues, Reggie Wayne going deep and going in for six. A university is a journey of discovery, transformation, achievement. City of Miami. Go and change the world. The AXA Halftime Report is sponsored by AXA Advisors. Building futures. 
Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the AXA Halftime Report. I'm Tim Brando alongside Spencer Tillman. No marquee matchups, you say? We've got an upset <laughs> Saturday. Well, the, the kind of upsets are going to change the course of the rest of the season if they play out this way. No doubt about it. We begin with a big one. Wisconsin goes down. This is the sixth preseason AP Top 10 team to lose. And uh, Michael Bennett did all he could coming back from those NCAA sanctions to make it a, a victory in Madison. Boy, he's a talented guy. Watch him handle the pitch out on the deal and then take it the distance right here, 46 yards. 48 carries, 293, he's durable as well. Tim Long is long enough and good in regulation. It ends, Northwestern is tied now in double overtime. It's Damian Anderson, who was the workhorse for Northwestern today. 174 yards on toll, but 12 of those there to win it. 47 to 44, the final score. Wisconsin had won 11 straight games. But they were looking ahead to Michigan and Ohio State in back-to-back -back weeks. Penn State, Ohio State, more of the same for Jopa's Nittany Lions. Rashard Casey finally benched. No better does uh, Matt Seneca fare. Ball knocked away, then recovered by nose guard Mike Collins, who lumbers in from 10 yards away. And uh, the rainy nightmare continues for Jopa. 45 to 6. Now, on the upside, how about the Lou Holtz story? Biggest story in all of college football. This is a fourth and 10 play. Eric Kimry, a red shirt sophomore, comes in for an injured Phil Petty to Jermail Kelly, his favorite target. The ball game is on the line right there. That's incredible. I mean, this guy comes in pretty much cold off the bench and does the job, Tim. They had a field goal and win at 23-19. You know, they've played four home games. Three times the goalpost has come down. Mike McGee, the athletic director, he doesn't mind paying, oh, 10,000 per goalpost. Yeah, he? particularly on a big win like this. <laughs> Lou Holtz, you can't really say enough about what he's been able to do. Kimrick, how about him coming in? His only pass of the day, throwing what is a touch pass. You got to make that thing time up right. He does it like he's been playing all afternoon. Well, incredible. If you ever leave this studio to go into coaching we know you'll be successful <laughs> all right let's take you now to new mexico state in georgia as we keep it in the southeastern conference and today dogs hunker down and get it done on the ground yeah how about this and so watch them create a little flow right here the backup quarterback there uh, handing it off the ball bruce thornton makes a nice cut to the sideline he's going to dive in the end zone for about 16 out makes it seven nothing quincy carter the one-time heisman hopeful does atone to some degree 12 23 182 yards a touchdown but he also had a pick today minnesota and Purdue do the Boilermakers in their first Big Ten game of the year against the Golden Gophers. Yeah, this crossing pattern to Benny Sutherland is Drew Brees' favorite play. You got to see that in practice. Minnesota obviously saw it in the game as the Boilermakers come away with the win. Brees has Big Ten records for completions and attempts in the game. 33 of 49, 409 yards, two touchdowns, and also a rushing touchdown on the day. Rice and Oklahoma, where they were <laughs> celebrating the 85 championship today. Yeah. you were a part of. You know, when you pass so much like Oklahoma, then you hit them at the slow draw. How about that play? Right up the middle. Griffin, Quentin Griffin, over 100 yards today, scampering there. 42 to 14 overall. Josh Heupel, 27 of 35. I bet Switzer was dizzy after watching <laughs> that air brigade. Well, the football action continues tomorrow with an NFL doubleheader on CBS in the early games. Most of you will see New England take on Miami. Then later, most will see the Keyshawn Bowl when Tampa hosts the New York Jets. And as always, it all begins at noon Eastern with the NFL today. The AXA Halftime Report does continue after this. You can feel it right away. There are signs of it everywhere you look. It's something that seems to come naturally once you become a mountaineer. This is West Virginia University, and there is a spirit here like nowhere else, a camaraderie, a shared sense of purpose. It's the feeling that together we can achieve our best. At the half, Miami leads West Virginia 21-10. Last year, Clinton Portis ran away with 104 yards. This season, he's breaking away with a big second-quarter touchdown, giving the Hurricanes a 21-10 lead. We'll come back to Morgantown after this. Just seconds away from the start of the third quarter, Miami leading West Virginia 21-10. Welcome back, Craig Borjank with Jim Blevins. West Virginia running some of the motion from this crowd here early, but yet the, the 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 play that really changed things around for Miami, Leonard Myers making the pick. It was like the balloon full yeah. of air and poof, and it all goes out. And that's what happened because they were up seven or nothing, and then quarterback makes a, a, a big mistake. And just one little thing, but it's a big mistake. The game turned on that seven seven, and then momentum clearly goes to Miami. And statistically, it's uh, it's pretty one sided. Is 
Miami's defense dominated West Virginia offensively. They only had 95 total yards offense, West Virginia, and uh, they're really going to have to come back. I, I thought that Miami's touchdown late in the half was another crushing blow to, to West Virginia. They can still come back and win, but that was a tough drive. And it's where the two turnovers by a team at the half, and you're going to be leading 21-10. You look at the two big guns in this game, Santana Moss, four catches, 51 yards. Cooper Rigo has been beaten, battered. 16 carries, 70 yards the hard way, and the one touchdown. Well, part of the storyline of this game, the two superstars, Santana Moss and Coburn, and Santana, that's a kind of an off game for him if you keep into, take into consideration the muffed fumble that cost them a touchdown. And then, of course, um, Coburn is sitting in the stands for this one. Well, West Virginia will receive going left to right. Todd Seavers will kick away and back deep will be Terry and Daniel. 21 10. As we start the third quarter here in Morgantown, West Virginia, 12th ranked Miami. Strong kick and no chance for a return. So the Mountaineers will start at their own 20 yard line. safe to say that Brad Lewis had a tough time in the first two quarters as you look at his numbers Dean 4 of 13 24 yards and had the pick run back by Myers and that tied the game at seven but I think that was really as you mentioned a very key key moment in this game that the emotion left the stadium. Well I think some of the mistakes are correctable because it isn't that they're being completely physically manhandled they had the penalties that killed them and then that interception was a mental error. Starting on the ground and again starting where he left off. Tough yards for Rigo and he was taken down by the strong safety Edward Reed. A very active hurricane defense especially in that second quarter. So what you have happened there if we go back to something we talked about earlier as well is that if you can't establish some type of run pass balance you're going to have those safeties in your backfield Craig all day long all teams play it they play different versions four three whatever it is teams are, are putting pressure on quarterbacks and they're getting safeties in the backfield if you can't get them to back up and play legitimate defense you don't have much of a chance to run the football. a loss of two on the play second hey! As Lewis sets his feet and throws to the sideline. Nice catch. Over the spin out move. Antonio Brown, second effort. That looks to be a first down for West Virginia. And it's those little plays just like that that puts the fire back not only in the team, but in this crowd. Well, this is a good play for Lewis. You know that Brown's going to do his part. Rump, a terrific corner man. He has him turned around. I mean, Rump now is off of him 10 yards and comes back, can't make the tackle. But that gets Brad Lewis, the quarterback, into a little bit of a comfort zone. Antonio Brown with that blazing speed out of Miami, Florida, played at Miami Central. So a little bit of an incentive, I would say, against uh, against the Hurricane. Rigo, the ball carrier, stacked up, broke the first tackle, but taken down at the 31. Dan Morgan, the senior middle linebacker, the old fullback turn linebacker. Well, you think holes are there? Well, when you have speed that Miami has, they collapse very, very quickly. It looks like it's there. No, it's not. There are five white shirts all around the ball carrier. Wes Hours kind of gave uh, Morgan a little kiss on that on that block, and Morgan able to play off of it and make the tackle. Second down and eight. We go to lone back. Lewis sets and throws near sideline. The catch is pulled down by Burton, the tight end. Burton to the 36, tackled by Al Blades. Well, our Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete of the Game is West Virginia University tight end. Sean Burton, Rigid Tools' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to West Virginia University's General Scholarship Fund. Don Nealon calls him the biggest surprise of this football team. Only a sophomore. A couple of grabs today for six yards. West Virginia trying to riddle some of that lead down off Miami. 21-10. First drive of this half. Three wide receivers from the shotgun is Brad Lewis. Quick step on the slant. Braxton. Pass 
midfield first down West Virginia a hot read and a good read by the QB Brad Lewis to Braxton 19 yard pickup well this play almost went the distance because Miami has eight guys up rushing it's an all out rush in the secondary there's only three guys there and then when Braxton makes the defender miss chance to go watch Morgan and Lewis Morgan wins that battle but really Lewis does doesn't he I think he can laugh a little bit coming back to the yeah. huddle. It'll be a it'll be a short laugh though. It will be short. <laughs> Braxton and Terry line up as your two wide outs in first and ten. Lewis sets up good protection over the middle and as he's known for the strong arm. Tough throw, strong, incomplete. Well, that's a ball I think is so well covered. I don't think. Um, Dan Marino would have completed it. You pick your quarterback. But Lewis is such a stout machismo. I mean, he's a guy that is such a macho type guy. Sometimes I think he has trouble in putting enough air under the ball. And you've got to be able to have the touch passes, and then you've yeah, got to be able point. to rifle. Good point. You know, he's one of the strongest quarterbacks in Division I football. Right. Bench is nearly 400, about 375, 380. That's, uh, that's quite a that's, number that's for a guy big. at 6'3", 220. <laughs> Here he goes, gets the ball. Nice cut as he tried to go to the near side of the field, but a great ankle tackle by Edward Reed. Well, nothing up the middle, made the cut outside and brought down. Yeah, he, he made a good cut out to the outside, but uh, Reed, there's a reason that number 20, Reed, the safety here, is a Thorpe finalist. Whoop, outside, down low. I mean, he, he is a very sure tackler. Now, he came into this game averaging 12 stops a game. A strong safety on a set rose, Louisiana. Third down and nine from the 45 yard line. Shotgun once again. Brad Lewis, hot read and boy, right there to make the read. Watching the eyes was Myers. Boy, he did that earlier in the first quarter and nearly had his second easy run in of the day. Oh, you called it. You called it. They, they. Looked like blitz. They, they faked blitz. They backed up at the zone coverage. Myers broke on that one, and you're right, he'd be crossing the end zone about right now. Nobody's faster than that. He had already been. Yeah. <laughs> Fazalari back to punt. Low snap again. Gets it away. Fair catch by Santana. Moss flags come down. Second week in a row, we've seen flags where you have to give the receiver the opportunity to catch the football. That one was not close. That's violation of the halo rule and a penalty. West Virginia thrown against Lewis Daniels. Saw that last week against uh, Penn Penn State. Right. We'll get the call here from our referee. Jim McConaughey. There's Daniels. Very aggressive special teams is West Virginia. Mentioned a few times today, they they label themselves the Black Hats, and that is a a, a salute to the the Mountain State and to the coal miners. Fair catch it appears on the kick machine. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, you know, Don Neelan's teams throughout the years have been known for having great special teams. Not anymore. They're struggling getting snaps and this type of stuff. That's the reason they're behind 21 to 10. Miami leading West Virginia 21 10 and they will have their first offensive series here in the third quarter. 10 51 left to play. Morgantown, West Virginia, home of the Mountaineers. Dorsey, quarterback in Miami. And Danny's 13 of 21, 187 yards and a one touchdown. In motion is Robert Williams. And off and plenty of running room. James Jackson. Hackett makes the tackle. Aflac trivia question. In the Big East Conference, only four teams have ever won Ever won the Big East Championship? Only four teams. Can you name the four teams and how many they have won? The answer will be forthcoming. Good question. I think you know that answer. 
We always get a sneak peek, don't we, though? <laughs> it helps on Friday night about <laughs> 9 o'clock. Reggie Wayne, Santana Moss. The two wide outs, Moss in motion. Handoff, Jackson stacked up. Good pursuit by West Virginia, led by Edmonds, number 41. One of the team captains who made a switch this year, Dean. He went in from inside to outside rush linebacker. Well, he says that uh, it's been tough for him to get used to having his hand down. He's been a guy that, uh, excuse me, he's had it, been a guy who's had his hand down, and now he has it up. Meaning he's gone from defensive line to basically being a stand-up guy. And that goes along with the theory of what they've done defensively to be a little smaller but be faster. Third down and four. Miami from the eye. To the far sideline, simple pitch and catch. Santana Moss reaches up and makes the grab. And Dean, we look around at today's heroes around the country. Tough loss, Wisconsin against Northwestern in two overtimes. Michael Bennett, though, 48 carries, 293. You got like Drew Brees and his chance at a Heisman. Well, that's a great day for Drew to come back. I, I don't know after his uh, loss, uh, what was it, Notre Dame? That would, would hurt him there, but he's had a terrific uh, career, and he'll go high in the draft. On the rollout, Dorsey. Went to his tight end, Mercer incomplete. And Mercer a big target at 6'7", 245. He's a little stiff, and that's the problem that he has as being the, the follow-up guy. I tell you, he has two problems. The, the first is that he's a little stiff, but the second is even bigger, and that's that Bubba Franks yeah. is the guy that he followed, and Bubba Franks was so talented. A top pick in the draft last year, he had five catches, 74 yards, and a touchdown in this game. Andre King, Gerald Jones with two wideouts. And off Jackson, nothing up the middle, cuts outside. And taken down at the 47, call up the 48 by Brian King. You know, Edron James, the great running back, called James Jackson this past week. James a little bit down about some of the playing time between uh, he and Davenport and Portis. But, you know, Edron James said, you know what, guy, just stay positive. Yeah. You know, James Jackson told us, though, he said, I'm not happy, but I'm a team player. Miami, two of eight on third down conversion today. They're looking here at third down and five. Dorsey throws, complete, reaching for the first down marker is Moss, and I believe it's going to be short. Brian King tracked him down to make the stop. Well, this is all a matter of where the line judge spots this football. It's a good throw, quarterback's gaining more confidence, and, and where would you spot this? It's where the ball is when his foot is out of bounds, so I think that was a correct spot. He lunged forward with the ball, and maybe we'll see a better angle here. He's out of bounds, then he leans forward, so that was a correct call. Cap shot will punt on fourth and short, and a good boot. High hanger, takes a bounce two yards deep, no return. So West Virginia will have it again when we come back to Morgantown, Miami, 21-10. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot, MSN, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and by Suzuki. Well, if you never made a visit to Morgantown, West Virginia, beautiful. And wait about two weeks as these trees yeah. Start to turn orange and bronze and gold. Great people here as well, and uh, temperatures, weather has just been terrific. We've had threatening skies here, and been able to escape it so far. Lewis under center for West Virginia, seven of 18 in this game for 58 yards and one interception. Play action, good protection, throws and picked off. Howard Clark will just walk it in for the Hurricanes. Twenty nine yard return after the pick Howard Clark only a sophomore. Keep your eye on Quincy hips here to your left number 90. I think he distracts the quarterback 
just enough, either gets a hand on it or is a distraction to have that ball so poorly underthrown. I mean, it wasn't even close, Craig. It had to have had that happen to him. Seavers will try the extra point. Kick is up and through the uprights. 28 to 10 off the interception by Howard Clark. And now a look at this week's Suzuki Heisman Watch Update. Tim Brando back in New York alongside Spencer Tillman. Sort of a good news, bad news story with Wisconsin's Michael Bennett this afternoon. Yeah, in terms of personal performance, you got to be excited about it. 48 carries for 293 yards. Michael Bennett doing the job here on the option. You know, Wisconsin has a rich tradition of producing great runners. This could be the eighth consecutive year that they had runner go over 1,000 yards, Tim. For more information on the Suzuki Eisman watch, log on to cbs.sportsline.com. Well, other Heisman hopefuls, you got to think of Chris Wanky down the Florida State way and Crouch at Nebraska and Rudy Johnson, Auburn. What do you like? Well, Johnson's done a great job. Uh, those, the two quarterbacks. I'm a quarterback, so I'm going to pick one of those guys. But, <laughs> you know, Nebraska, if they continue to win and go on and win a championship, Eric Crouch has to be the guy. Chris Winky is having a very good year, and I'm glad that he came back. But uh, I would say it would be a toss-up between those two at this point. I just respect quarterbacks that go win. I don't get so caught up in statistics when I yep. vote for the Heisman. Right. 28-10 our score here in Morgantown after the interception return for a touchdown. Sean Terry returns to the 18-yard line. Second pick today, Dean returned for a touchdown. Well, he has a, a route right in here to go to, and it's very well covered. Well, watch Lewis. And upon further review, our committee says he did not get hit. He shouldn't have thrown it. He short-armed it. And that is a, if there is such a thing in football, it's a fatal mistake. That one, combined with the other fatal mistakes, uh, you just put your offense in too big of a hole. You're not going to chase this guy down. He's the fastest backer on Miami's uh, defense. Runs yeah. about a 4 4 five, 40. But it's the second interception of the day. Two run back for touchdown. And Lewis had not thrown a, a pick in the first two games. And there's a catch you got to make. Antonio Brown had it and dropped it at the 21. You, you know, what we're seeing, though, is clearly a terrific secondary. Yeah. Just playing really well. Because if that ball's completed, Craig, it's a six-yard game. And Dean, any publication that you pick up today, I don't care if it was preseason and you continue to read, this Miami secondary has been much heralded, ranked uh, pretty much top three around the country and secondary. Well, they're all around the 200 to 210 range, and they have the size, but more than anything, they have the speed and the instincts. Boy, Kane's on the blitz, and coming hard from the strong safety spot was Reed. Edward Reed. Well, now you're, if you're Greg Schiano, the defensive coordinator, it's just easy pickings. You've got the offense back on its heels, not knowing what it's going to be able to do, and you can call anything defensively and it's working. Illegal formation on the offense. The penalty is declined. Well, here's the answer to the AFLAC trivia question. In the Big East Conference, only four teams, Dean, have won the Big East Championship. Can you name the four teams and how many they have won? Well, we have the answer. Miami with four, Syracuse three, Virginia Tech three, and West Virginia with one Big East title. So Miami has, uh, Miami and Syracuse, along Miami with Virginia and, Tech, dominated. Yeah, Frank Beamer's bunch uh, making up ground quickly. Third down at 13. Lewis from the shotgun, three wide receiver set. Lewis again on the slant. Makes a connection with Braxton to sophomore. Still loose ball. Yeah. Loose ball. That secondary, Craig, is doing everything. That's a legal fumble, and that yeah. ball goes yeah. back to Miami. You know, not only are they covering, not only are they tackling, not they're only clawing. are they blitzing, but they're clawing the ball away. Well, this the slant a, has worked, Dean, all day. It has, but, but the key to the slant, if you're going to give the cushion, is to be there, give a jarring tackle, get help, and strip the ball. Now, that is a terrific play by Myers, the 
least celebrated of that foursome back there who had the touchdown earlier. Boy, turnovers a, a huge, huge concern for Don Nealon. And now Miami. A great field position to run away with this game. Najee Davenport knocked around and you know, in talking, with, in talking with Don Nealon yesterday about what he felt he needed to do to win this one, you know, he started out like most coaches do, but he meant it. He said, you know, we can't uh, turn the ball over and we can't have errors in the kicking game. And those two things have really hamstrung them today. He knew from a talent perspective, Miami has a, a good advantage over his club. Second down. Davenport to the 26. For an update on Florida and Kentucky, let's go to Tim Brando in New York. Timmy? Craig, as you know, Steve Spurrier was not at all happy with his running game last week, so let's improve upon it a week later. Ernest Graham, nice juke and a stiff arm as he sets sail 57 yards. Florida now getting it done in a variety of ways. 45-17 in the third. Back to Craig. Timmy, I don't think uh, Don Nealon's too happy with run or pass game here in uh, Morgantown this afternoon against Miami. All I needed to know is that Steve Spurrier was upset, and I looked for a wide margin there today. Dorsey makes a connection and is pulled down by Reggie Wayne, the senior. Lance Frazier made the tackle. And how about Reggie Wayne? With four receptions, he's now tied Michael Irvin, second place on Miami's reception list. And guess who's just ahead? Lamar Thomas. He needs one more. He's got him in his sights. This is a completely consistent football play. Under six minutes left, third quarter. Davenport backed up and dropped. William Perry, number 94, had him around the ankles. There's Bush Davis pacing. He's had a terrific Big East record, Dean. He's 26 and 9 since he took over this program. Well, he's just done a terrific job. He has instilled discipline. He has players graduating. He's taken advantage of that recruiting base. I mean, you can you can recruit out of, uh, what is it, Broward County and Dade County enough to, to go win a national championship out of those two counties alone, and he's doing that. Well, don't forget tomorrow at halftime, our NFL game coverage, Jim Nance, Craig James, Jerry Glanville, and Mike Ditka will bring you all the scores and highlights on the NASDAQ.com halftime report. You like that Ditka. Ditka. <laughs> Big Iron Mike, what a character. Yeah, yeah we did the pit game uh, last week. Old uh, pit stadium is down where Ditka made his name. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he had a great career. I'm with some guy named Dan Marino. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Wayne Moss and Mercer. White out says on the rollout, it's Dorsey. Nothing fancy with this offense right now as Shockey makes the reception. The highly recruited sophomore out of Ada, Oklahoma, David Carter, made the stop. Yeah, and you know, though, what, what they're doing is they're being consistent. And Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator, tells me that there's one thing he tells his quarterback, and that is we want to throw completions. If you throw completions, it'll take care of itself, and we will win football games. Third down, Dorsey on the bootleg, rolls, fires, and nearly intercepted. Good read. He wanted Shockey, but Sherrod was right there. The free safety for West Virginia. Well, that's some of that film study, knowing what's coming there and breaking on the ball, and who knows, it might have been an interception with only the quarterback a chance to tackle him. But you know when those plays are there, Craig, you have to make them. It was a good play, but not a great one. Seavers have tried the field goal, a little chip shot from 29, and it's up and good. So Seavers connects. Miami continues to build the lead. They lead West Virginia 31-10. Well, Dean, let's take a look at our Exxon scoring recap and plenty. Rigo got uh, West Virginia rolling, going up by seven, but then it's been the two picks in this game thrown by West Virginia and returned for the touchdowns. And that's how we got here. Well, this is the key play of the ball game. If you had to say what's the one play that turned this game around, what's the most important play, that would be it right there.
31-10 with 4.42 left here in the third quarter. You know, you look at points off turnovers, I think this will also burn Don Nealon quite a bit when he looks at the postgame stats, but Miami has scored 17 points off West Virginia turnovers. Seavers 29 yards, Miami went seven plays, 19 yards, and burned 237 off the clock. And those 19-yard gains or 19-yard scoring drives are not what defenses need, and not what head coaches need who are running short on patience. Well, Butch is still uh, wearing a groove in the carpet despite a 31-10 lead. Got the game plan in his uh, back pocket. I got to know Butch pretty well when he was the defensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys and uh, really a, a neat guy, a really solid coach. He's part of that, uh, you know, all coaches have the family tree yep. of where they come from, and he's part of that group with Jimmy Johnson and Pat Jones and <clears throat> a lot of the uh, Dave Wonstad that much. There's a lot of winning coaches out of that group. And a lot of folks told Butch, too, when he took this job six seasons ago, you are crazy. You're walking into a, a mm -hmm. hornet's nest. you got NCAA problems. You're going to lose scholarships. The road back may be too long. And look what Butch Davis has done. Yeah. Well, his name continues to come up, Craig, anytime a, an NFL job opens, it seems like uh, Butch's name is one of the tops on the list. Well, time for our U.S. Army heritage, and the year was 1993. Robert Walker's 19-yard touchdown run sealed West Virginia's first and only Big East title. The Mountaineers, guess what? Knocking off the Hurricanes, and that is our U.S. Army heritage. No water bucket needed today for Coach Nealon. No. May need one to cool him off <laughs> after this game. He's going to be uh, not happy. You look at the total yards. Canes over 300 and West Virginia struggle from uh, basically the start. They throw to the backfield. Hours incomplete. And let's go to New York for an update on UCLA and Oregon. Here's Tim Brando. Craig Dean will get a kick out of this. They used to throw passes like this at Oklahoma as quarterbacks. Off the play action fake, Drew Bennett to Freddie Mitchell, 55 yards all told. It's 10-10 now. Quack attack and Bruins in Eugene. Back to Craig. All right, Dill. He's quack, right. That's quack old, attack. That's a right 313 post is what that is. How many touchdowns did you finally, did you, uh, Fake it in, pull back, and throw it forward. You know, my, my memory uh, isn't clicking right now, but uh, usually when we ran those, they were open. But uh, that was right 313 post. It's just a different millennium. <laughs> Still a touchdown, though, isn't it? I'm not going to ask you when you play. <laughs> quick drop and a quick pitch to Ivy, who has been basically shut down in this game by the 26 to the 26-yard line. Corey Ivy, one of the offensive captains. Third down and four, and the clock runs with 4.10 left. Third quarter. West Virginia, two of 12 on third down conversions this afternoon. Tough going. And flags fly. You know, things started well for the Mountaineers offensively, but they had quickly deteriorated. Dead ball. Full start on the offense. Five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat the down. Sunday on 60 Minutes, how did Baku and the former Soviet Union get to be an American boom town? I got the answer. It's the oil. Find oil, and you're going to find American oil men. That's Sunday on 60 Minutes here on CBS. Third down to nine, facing West Virginia. Lewis from the shotgun, three wide receivers set. Quick throw to the sideline, incomplete. Well, and little extracurricular activity uh, following that, along with Ivy and Mike Rumpf. Well, I've been on the 
the end of the booze, the receiving end of the booze, and that's what Lewis is hearing right now. I don't know that it's specifically headed his direction. Sometimes it's just in total frustration with the team. Sometimes it's with the offense, but it's never good to be booed in your home arena. Fazolari, low snap again, gets the boot away off the side of its foot. And this one takes a wicked bounce back at the 45-yard line. So the Canes, I tell you, West Virginia setting the table right here. Short field to work with. That's a 27-yard punt. Well, this fall on CBS, Washington, D.C.'s new police commissioner is handpicking the best crime-fighting team in the nation. Now the people have someone on their side. Emmy winner Craig T. Nelson stars in the district. Premieres Saturday, October 7th, here on CBS. In my opinion, in Division One, you've got to be able to punt the ball 40 plus yards. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be able to snap it, catch it, punt it, and cover it. Going deep. Wayne, wide open. Take it in. Bye bye. I think we've seen that play before today. Wow. Reggie Wayne broke free, and Dorsey hit him on stride, and he beat Brian King. What we're seeing is Miami playing the way that um, people expected at the beginning of the year in the summer when they had them some had them ranked number one. A lot of them had them in the top five. They stumbled at Washington. Dorsey didn't handle the pressure well. He learned his lesson, and they're putting on a clinic right now. Severs with the extra point boots it up and good. And Miami is up 38 to 10 from the touchdown. Thanks for the touchdown from Dorsey to Wayne. It's that same matchup. You've got a redshirt freshman 11 King over here on the corner and he'll be matched up on your left up top with Reggie Wayne and you can't get in that position. That's too easy. And that touchdown catch that reception now ties Wayne all time with Lamar Thomas for the reception lead at the University of Miami. You know the biggest problem back there at cornerback often is the, the need the desire to peek at the quarterback as a cornerback you have to play your receiver and you can't play the quarterback and as soon as your eyes go back to that quarterback the receiver has a step on you. and as fast as the receivers and the players are at Miami when they get a step on you they're going to beat you and you have to hope that Dorsey's not going to hit him and he is today and Dean I think we have to bring up the point that this West Virginia defense came in much heralded this was the 11th ranked defense in the nation allowing 246 and only 171 in the air and 75 yards rushing well I think they knew that the secondary was still a big question mark because of the youth and because of the lack of depth I think they felt very good about the front seven and those are good football players. Miami is explosive and I don't think West Virginia was as good defensively as early statistics might lead you to believe. Well, Williams had an afternoon five receptions 111 yards two touchdown receptions that's two six uh, 116 and the longest catch of 47 not bad numbers again no chance for a return on a knee is Terry. And so West Virginia down 38 10. They have a big hill to climb with 306 left in this third quarter. Well, here's their revenge tour in the locker room that uh, they were looking for revenge well, they, on a few teams. Oh, they got revenge early. Boston College got revenge against Maryland. And they were hoping for the revenge tour to continue today. They've always had tough, close games against Miami. Don Neal, though, doesn't like the word revenge, but somehow it showed up in the locker room. Well, it may be taken down. It didn't, uh, they didn't get it today. Well, they haven't so far. It would be a miraculous comeback if they were able to do it. Official timeout. Some activity in that end zone. Will they stop the clock? Take care of it. 306 left. Third quarter from the eye. One game has not been there. Rigo has had tough, tough 
goings all day. Morgan made the tackle along with uh, Matt Walters. Well, I think we've, what we've seen today so far through almost three quarters is a complete football team at Miami. They have an offensive line that is steady. They have a quarterback who is growing with a lot of upside who will only get better as the games develop. The more games he gets under his belt and uh, the weapons behind him and on his flanks. And defensively, you're watching him put on a clinic. Rigo, 21 carries for 68 yards. Antonio Brown in motion. Play action, Lewis sets and throws and complete. Now the crowd that remains uh, looking for a flag. Brown, the intended receiver, Leonard Myers, the cover man. Well, I appreciate their enthusiasm, but I believe this ball might have been uncatchable. And so you wouldn't be able to call that even had Myers gotten there a fraction of a second earlier, and it seemed to be fairly spontaneous to me anyway. Brings up third down and 11. And I imagine if you're sitting in the stands, you're looking to, to boo and express your opinion any way you can. Let out some frustration because this thing started off so well for West Virginia. And it was led by Rigo. Mm -hmm. Third down, 11. Lewis stands in the pocket, throws with a bounce, incomplete. That's going to bring some more boo birds out. He was looking for Sean Terry, 88. A junior out of Homestead, Florida. Well, I'm going to tell you what that was. He underthrew him by 10 yards, right? What that is, is being afraid your ball's going to get picked off again and go for a touchdown. I mean, if you touch a, a, a fire, if you have a match and you touch it and it burns your hand, you're not going to go there again. Even though that was not a good throw, he was not going to let that happen. You can't play negative. You've got to play aggressive. West Virginia forced to punt again. Good kick, and Santana Moss settles under at the 37. Moss brings it near sideline and runs out of bounds at the 47. Well, Dean, next week on the Home Depot College Football here on CBS, Virginia Tech, Boston College, or third-ranked Florida taking on 25th-ranked Mississippi State next Saturday here on CBS. And it starts with the college football today. There's a couple of well-dressed guys. Looking sweet, aren't they? Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. How about Florida today? How about Florida today? Both of those games will be good. You have Michael Vick in the one game. You've got Florida and Jackie Sherrill down in Starkville. I that's, can hear the cowbells ringing now. That's where we'll be. Starkville, Mississippi. Miami with the football. 203 left. They throw it to the far side. Guess who? They get it done. It's done. Reggie Wayne becomes the all-time receiver in receptions at the University of Miami. And he knew it. Butch knows it. And that play was set up for that. Lost a shoe, but that's fine. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. A real popular player on this club. Well, today he passes uh, Michael Irvin and also Lamar Thomas. A couple of uh, exceptional, exceptional wide receivers. That was a six-yard gain. Second down and four. Less than two minutes left in the third quarter. And off to Jackson. Dances to the 45. You know, it speaks to the depth of the wide receivers at Miami when Reggie Wayne can set that record, career receptions. And if you just ask the guy on the street out in Colorado or California, name a receiver Miami, it's Santana Moss. You know, that, that's the great point, is that Moss gets all the hype. You know, I mean, blazing speed, no doubt. But Reggie Wayne, I guess, is the definition of just consistency. Mm -hmm. Third down and two. Dorsey steps and fires. Near sideline, Andre King. I tell you, West Virginia's secondary played about 10 yards off of King. Lance Frazier made the tackle. Great story on Andre King. Here's a guy who signed with Michigan. He went to the minors for five years in baseball, and now he's the oldest player at 27 years of age. But they like him. He's a six-footer, but he's broad at 200, and this is his last season. Another weapon. He just he doesn't beat Winky, though, out at, uh, at Florida State. No. <laughs> I think he's up there with us. 28. Maybe not quite. Jackson. Stops and goes back to his right side to the 31. Hackett makes a tackle.
look at the numbers here, just uh, startling. 200 yard differential here, 282 for Kenny and Brad down at 82. And that just tells you Kenny Dorsey, number one, has the weapons, but he's coming of age. He's getting better every snap. And Larry Coker, the coordinator, is enjoying calling plays right now that will only gain him, only give him confidence. So Dean, every coach, every player we talked to at West Virginia made it very clear to win this game, they're not a lot of Dorsey. And they, they had him on a string a little bit early. And then the defense came through and gave him the confidence that he needed and a little breathing room. Well, when your defense gives you two touchdowns, you're right. That'll help confidence and the scoreboard. Third down and four, final seconds of the third quarter, ticking down here in Morgantown. And Dorsey will walk it over and talk to Butch Carter. That ends the third quarter, 38-10 Miami. We'll return to Mountaineer Field after this message and a word from your local station. Now well, sun's starting to drop here in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia. Miami putting the boom on the Mountaineers, 38-10, and they're knocking on the door once more at the 27-yard line. So Bush Davis has got to like what he has seen today in the second, third, and fourth quarters as we started here. And nice catch as it's Reggie Wayne making yet another catch. And Dorsey hits the turf. Greg Bullerjack uh, back along with Dean Blevins as we start the, the fourth quarter here in Morgantown. 38 to 10 is our score. And Dean, I guess it's it's all about uh, turnovers. Uh, West Virginia had a great start with Rigo, but yet it's the secondary of Miami, which was much heralded as one of the best in the country, and they've stepped forward today. They've lived up to that, and uh, you get to see the weapons on display. And you said a great catch by Wayne there a moment ago. I'll tell you what, it was a great throw too, as well as Jackson picks up a few. I've been really impressed with Dorsey. And uh, he has to come of age for this club to reach its potential. But he's come a long way, baby, in these first three quarters. Well, a gain of four brings up second down and six. You look at Dorsey's numbers today, 22 of 32, 291 with the pair of touchdowns. And he got plenty of help from his defense. James Jackson. Stumbles over his left foot and takes about a one yard loss back to the 22. McIntyre was around the football for West Virginia. West Virginia's defense today much tested. You look at Corey McIntyre. You know there's a lot of uh, Florida players on this team one of 14 is Corey McIntyre so you know this game has uh, has a lot of emotion Caught and then dropped Andre Johnson redshirt freshman he's a local Miami product out of Miami senior high school and Butch right now I think would probably let some of these younger players get a few reps in here Dean as uh, the fourth quarter is underway I think he will and that was not a good play by Andre Johnson, but Hurricanes fans will see a lot of him in the future. He has tons of potential and just another one of those guys you can put out on the flanks who can run and jump and catch and just do everything. Seavers will try a 39-yard kick. He hit from 29 in the third quarter, and it's up and good. So Seavers puts Miami on top 41-10 to 10 on the road. Well, Miami rolling along over West Virginia, 41 to 10. 3:13 left here in Morgantown. Come at you. 3:51 last scoring drive, and officially Sievers kicks it from 40 yards. Dorsey on that drive, four of five, Dean for 27 yards, just pitch and catch, but he was able to move the football and uh, let some of the younger guys just get some experience on the field as uh, they have built a 41-10 lead. I think he was on target with every pass. He had the one dropped out in the flat, so it was a perfect series for him. 
Receivers the kick, and it's taken by Terry at the two-yard line. Terry breaks it up past the 25 to the 29. So really right now, that's one of the better field positions of the afternoon for West Virginia. There's Don Nealon, 21 years as the head coach of the Mountaineers. 144 wins, the winningest coach in school history. He coached at Bowling Green. Some folks forget that, 68 to 1976. Well, Don Nealon is one of those coaches that is admired by every coach in the country. He has no enemies. He's a former president of the Coaches Association. And he is an old block and tackle guy, yeah. old school. But you know what? Paterno and Bowden and those guys are as well. Brad Lewis stays on the field as a quarterback. Little option play that pitched to Rigo. And he rumbles to the 43-yard line. And then you brought up a couple of uh, great names that compliment Don Nealon. But how about this? Consecutive years at a school. Joe, Joe Pa, Joe Paterno, 35 years. Lavelle Edwards just announced his retirement. 29 years at Brigham Young. Bobby Bowden still going strong at Florida State. And Don Nealon will move up to third after Lavelle Edwards uh, retires after this season. Talk about Paterno for a minute, though. Last week, we saw them shut out by Pitt. Today they score six points. I don't know if Penn State is going to recover and get a win as the season continues. It does not look good for Paterno. If they don't play any better, they may not win another game or two. Uh, it, it looks bad. I can't imagine Joe Paterno feeling any worse at any point in his career than he feels right now. Well, a slingshot pass by Lewis falls incomplete. Brad Lewis looking up into the stands at fans boo. And again, I know how that feels. You, you look up and you want to say, hey, you know what, guys? I work out hard. You know, I, I've done this my whole life to get a chance to come out here and play. And you don't know why that last play didn't work. And I, I, don't, I don't like college fans booing college players. Pros, they make million dollars. Go boo. But in college, I don't think you should do that. Well, he's heard plenty today. When he walked down on this last series, fans uh, saw number 14 and... Uh, they were booing as he walked onto the field. Throws and fires incomplete. And again, you can hear some of the boos as he misfires over the hands of Burton, his tight end. What it does is it forces, it puts the quarterback in a, uh, a pressure situation. In all athletics, you perform at your best when you're loose, when you're natural, when things come easily for you. And every time someone boos, and the fans aren't responsible for his poor play today, but they don't help it. I think they sit in the stands and they boo and they think that that's somehow helping. It's doing nothing but hurting. They will relieve him soon, I am sure, and we'll get a look at Scott McBride. Third down and 10. From the eye. Lewis continues to go to the air. Throws complete. And now you get a few uh, a claps. Of, oh, look at him. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I knew what he was thinking. Oh. He hooked up with Braxton, his sophomore. Oh, he's aware. It's, it's a bad situation. I mean, you can tell it, it, it burned me so long ago that uh, it still bothers me. I, I can feel exactly what that guy's going through. You actually heard some boos at OU? Well, 75,000 of them, and I was from the hometown. You bet. First and 10, West Virginia at the 35-yard line of Miami. Lewis pedals back. Good downfield coverage. Checks from behind. Throws across the grain complete. And now the clapping uh, begins. The volume is uh, increasing as he hits Burton the tight end. Morgan brought him down. Well, I'll tell you why it's important for this kid to have success, Lewis. It's not for the fans. Forget them. It, it's for his team because if he comes out and the other guy goes in, McBrien, regardless of what McBrien does, if he plays well, he's not ready. He's not their yeah. guy right now. That doesn't really help what the staff is trying to do. And if he plays poorly, then that doesn't help your quarterback either. He needs to have success even though they're about to get drunk. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Mountaineers. At the 23-yard line, little three-step drop. They give it up to Rigo. Around the corner he goes. Rigo, 10-5, and out of bounds at the four-yard line. Hey, that's a semi-statue semi of Liberty play. Watch the ball handling here by the quarterback. Okay, looks to receiver, fakes it. Slide a hand, hands it off on a little reverse. What do you think? Well, maybe he's learned from Houdini. Enrico continues to battle. 
I know what you're thinking. Where was that play about an hour exactly. ago? Exactly. 23 carries, 104 yards for Cooper Rigo. And I have a feeling he's going to feel uh, about a little stiff come uh, Sunday morning. Yeah. First and goal from the four yard line and the eye formation. Rigo stacked up. Actually, uh, he bumped Lewis, or Lewis bumped Rigo on the exchange, and Cornelius Green took advantage and made the made the tackle. The problem with Rigo today, besides Avon being out, is that he's had uh, several plays. I think he's had maybe three now of 20 yards or more. And besides that, though, Craig, there's been a lot of zip, a lot of nothing. Second down and goal. 11 carries for Rigo. This is amazing. He's over 100, but 11 carries less than a yard or less. Supports that thought. Exactly. Lewis chased from behind, works himself out of the jam, and then taken down at the 10-yard line. Boy, again, speed. It's all about speed at Miami. Chris Campbell made the tackle. Okay, what you have to remember with the new rule is that when you get in that situation, just throw it away. Just throw it past the line of scrimmage. And I don't think Miami fans want to want to see or hear this, but down is number 44. That's that's the, the, the backer of the Big East. That's Dan Morgan. Well, he was on the opposite side of the field where the play ended. Morgan, that's good to see up tonight on CBS. The final week of Big Brother is here. Only four guests remain who will be nominated for banishment next. Don't miss a live edition of Big Brother. Then Survivor's gone back to the island. If you missed any episodes of the summer hit, you're in luck. And here's your chance to catch the television phenomenon of the year. Plus Chuck Norris in Walker, Texas Ranger. It's all here tonight on CBS. Big Dan hadn't had a haircut in a while. <laughs> Hey, when you're bulletproof in college, you don't have to get your hair cut. No, you do what you want. <laughs> you may want to shave it tomorrow. Who knows? <laughs> Lewis pedals back through into the end zone. It was tipped. Incomplete. All so, right, Coach, you're going to kick a field goal or go for it? You don't need any field goal practice. Might as well go. There's a look at Jarrell Weaver. He's a twin. His brother, uh, Jermel, also on this Miami Hurricane team. He just uh, broke up that last play, number 58, redshirt freshman. Jermel, 57. Braxton and Terry line up to the far side. Rigo, the lone back on fourth down. Little pitch, Rigo at the 10, the 5, crashes down to the four-yard line. And Al Blades came up to make the tackle. And so the Mountaineers will give it up on downs. 10-14 left here in Morgantown. Miami in the driver's seat. The Home Depot College Football on CBS is sponsored by Volvo. Miller Lite. Visa. And by the United States Marine Corps. Welcome back to Morgantown. Miami 41, West Virginia 10. 10-14 left fourth quarter. There was about 64,000 here this afternoon, and uh, half are easily gone. You look at Dorsey's numbers, 22, uh, 33, 33, Dean, 291. Now he's been right on. He's had receivers open. He's thrown it open. He's drawn it into them when they were not open and he's had the running game to complement it which helps flag before the snap that ball ball start on the offense the penalty would be half the distance from the goal from the line of scrimmage repeat the down and for an update on Florida State Louisville here's Tim Brando back in New York Craig and Dean, I think both of you would agree, both Nebraska and Florida State's play has been relatively underwhelming. They need to get the running game going, and Travis Miner here for FSU takes it in against Louisville, 7-0. I would agree with that. Miami's back on their own two-yard line. Portis tries to give them some room to the five. 
That was only uh, Miami's second penalty, Dean, of the, uh, since the first yeah. quarter. Yeah, they've been playing flawlessly. You know, Tim was talking about uh, Florida State needing to run more. It's interesting. People say the cynics like to sit around and say, well, they can't run it enough to win a championship. Yeah. And then they look at Nebraska and they say, they can't throw it enough to win a championship. Meantime, they win championship after championship after championship. And they are working on those elements. But uh, in the meantime, they are racking up the trophies. You know, a lot of coaches believe we do. We got to do what we do best. Uh -huh. And whether that's run or whether that's pass, also, you got to remember, it's good defense for winning some championships, too. Davenport tackled for a two-yard loss, led by Lewis Daniels. So that Mountaineer defense continues to pursue despite being down 31. Well, that's a good sign because it's easy to become demoralized when you play against a machine like Miami has been today. They weren't a machine at Washington, but this is a different day, a different game, and they have been. But... This defense of Steve Dunlap's is still playing hard. And that's what most West Virginia teams have done under Don Nealon, regardless of the talent, Craig. Dorsey under center, hands off. Davenport leaning to the five, maybe the six-yard line. Craig, James you'll know Davis the, made the tackle. Pardon me, you'll know the answer to this because you saw West Virginia more last year than I did. But from what I can gather and, and talking with people, the difference in this year's team, if nothing else, is attitude. Yeah. And this bunch is still playing hard. They are. I don't know that a year ago it would have been that way. I think that's a, that's a great point. And, and the biggest discussion we had with the Mountaineers, most of these guys on their own stayed the summer, worked out, ran the hills, hit the weight room, the whole attitude changed. Off to that 2-0 start, and today they have hit a very good flag on the play. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Penalty would be half the distance to the goal. Repeat the down. I don't think Capshaw can get much, uh, much back on that back line. I don't... We can see his feet, but he is, he's, uh, his heels are right on it. This is going to be one of those catch kick. Don't worry about his steps, son, just catch kick. Catch kick. There you go. And a pretty good boot. Good hang time. Antonio Brown underneath at the 42. Switches directions and wrapped up at the 40 yard line. So Capshaw does a fine job, two-yard return, Antonio Brown, Miami big over West Virginia. Well, the band plays on here in Morgantown. Miami, however, on top big, 41-10 over the hometown West Virginia Mountaineers. And a new quarterback, Scott McBrien, a redshirt freshman, has checked in for Brad Lewis, number 17. He's a left-hander. He'll roll out and throw. The catch made, pulled down by Torrey Johnson, the backup fullback. And let's get a checkup. Uh, here's Tim Brando back in New York. Timmy. Craig, here's your story of the year in college football to this point. Lou Holtz is South Carolina Gamecocks beating Mississippi State. Lou Holtz is 4-0. Can you believe it? I told him. I said, we can play with anybody in the country. I now Shortly, I'm going to let him know which country. <laughs> and my old colleague's one-liners are as good as his record. Perfect for now. Gentlemen. Timmy, that is that is amazing turnaround. And the magic that Lou Holtz possesses, possesses is just unbelievable. McBrien on the rollout, tackled down by Chris Campbell. Well, you remember the old pass-fail test you had in school? 60% is what they look for, 35. That's a fail. I gave you the wrong number. F there. They fail that one. Four-yard average, F. They fail that one. 20 yards or more. The game's still going. They could get to that fourth goal of having four plays of 20 yards or more, but they have clearly failed the top three goals that they had for this game. Good look at McBrien, 20 years of age out of Rockville, Maryland. More of an option quarterback uh, out of high school. Hands it off straight up the middle. What a high school career this guy had. Terrence Johnson, the ball carrier. You're not kidding. How about 25 touchdowns uh, his senior season, Dean? And you got to appreciate this. He did not throw a pick. I've never seen a stat like that. He threw for about 2,000 yards. DeMatha went 13-0. and 
he has no interceptions. He's here on campus. He's shown that he has good feet, that he's savvy, but he needs to commit more to the football program is what the coaches tell us. And that's about all we were told. So you read into that what you want, but he has ability. Fourth down and three. Just barely got the play off. Here's that option. Turns and squeezes maybe a yard, but uh, West Virginia again will turn the ball back to Miami on downs. And for an update on Michigan State, Notre Dame, the Irish. Here's Tim Brando once again. Guys, what is it about fourth and ten today? South Carolina's winning touchdown was on fourth and ten. Here's Jeff Smoker on fourth and ten to Herb Haygood. 68 yards in East Lansing, Michigan State. Takes out Notre Dame, 27-21. Back to Craig and Dean. Hey, Tim, uh, I guess, and, and Dean, that takes a bubble, or pops the bubble a bit for uh, Notre Dame today. Well, but, but I mean, their losses have been good losses if there is such a thing. Nebraska and now this. One thing that you know about Notre Dame, if you have them, it's going to be a close game. Hurricanes I mean, have made a quarterback change. They've gone to Ethnic Sands, number 15, out of Carroll City, Florida, only a sophomore. This is an interesting story as well. He played QB in high school, the option quarterback. His freshman year, though, they moved him out to wideout, but then they switched him to quarterback in the spring. Well, he, he came in as a true option quarterback and really as an athlete. And when they didn't have enough quarterbacks, he was the guy to go back there now. And if Dorsey were to go down, he would have to carry the hopes of this football program. Pitch to Davenport, taken down, and Dorsey came through. This was another tested uh, game of that need to be tested. 22-33 attempts, 291 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. And he just is another young gun in a long line of young guns. You know, look at what these guys did. You have Kelly and you have Testaverde. They're the only two guys who didn't win national championships. I mean, they had great years in their first years, but Bernie Kozar, Steve Walsh, and Gino Toretta won championships in their first years. That's what's amazing. Mm -hmm. Bernie, what a neat guy. I guess he's really helped us here recently. All those numbers you read were first year numbers of wins and losses. That's been cool. You know, BYU has been known as quarterback uh, U, but uh, Miami has produced uh, uh, th that's quarterback university as well. That's one of the things that I really appreciate uh, about that program, though, is the quarterback tradition and the fact that guys like Bernie and some of those other quarterbacks we showed keep in touch with the program, keep in touch with the players. Bernie Kozar is about as neat a guy as you're going to find. And Kenny Dorsey was down. He was bummed out after that yeah. performance in Washington. And who was there? Bernie was there to say, chill out. You know, it'll be all right. We've all been there. And look what this young kid's done. Cap shot a punt. Antonio Brown circles underneath it at the 25, nearly lost it, and hits the turf at the 26-yard line. A timeout, 4-12 remaining, 41-10 Hurricanes. It will be a fun plane trip back to Miami for the Hurricanes. They lead West Virginia by 31. remaining. McBrien gets his second series here in the second half for the Mountaineers. And here's our CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Passing yards. Miami 291. West Virginia 115. And for complete college football coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. And Dean, you talked about early in the open, the X factor as you dealt the cards, the, the, the wild card in this game. Right there. Yeah. Ken Dorsey. Yeah. We talked about that, and we talked about what would happen with the injury to Coburn. And although Rigo Cooper had a big day, they needed more than that. And Rigon could have, could have helped them a little. McBrien throws complete. Taken down at near midfield, and the tackle by Marquise Fitzgerald. The catch pulled in. Abraham makes the catch. Hey, that'll get the natives excited. Oh, yeah. You always have to leave them with hope. And Those then, uh, who are left. <laughs> yeah, Miami will do that to you. That's a nice play, though, buying some time, finding this guy, and uh, putting some air under it. What's the difference with the left-hander in the sense of as a wide out getting used from a, a right-handed uh, Brad Lewis and looking at a ball coming to you from the left hand? The guys who aren't very good receivers will say it's really tough to catch balls, and the real good receivers say it doesn't matter. 
The trickery continues. Handoff Terrence Johnson. And he bangs his way back to the line of scrimmage. We look at West Virginia's uh, remaining schedule. They're going to open up uh, finally their first road game at Temple, then Idaho, Vatek. How about Notre Dame? And they're open on the 28th. Syracuse, Rutgers, East Carolina, and they finish up at Three Rivers against Pittsburgh. Well, they've got their work cut out for them. They can win a lot of games this year, but they'll have to play better and smarter than they did today. I think the challenge, though, is to, to learn from this game, and you quickly have to move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. The injury to Bryant and Coborn being out didn't help, but you've got to get back together and go on. Or McBrien shoots it downfield. And let's get an update. Here's Tim Brando in New York. Craig, when you have 202 yards rushing and you hold the opponent to just 23, you're probably in good shape. And the quack attack is Maurice Morris, one of the really fine newcomers in the Pac-10, has 133 of those yards. Oregon by a dozen. I thought those ducks might get a hold Ooh. of them today. That is hostile territory. Oh, yeah. They're, wow. They're tough out at home. Oh, Bob Toledo, though, has just done a terrific job in turning that back around. He had him on top, had him on bottom, and now they're on the way back up. Brian throws again. Johnson makes the catch. Back up to Hours at fullback. And Dangerfield, he gets no respect, but he got respect on that play. <laughs> I had to say that. Dangerfield makes a tackle. Hey, the buzz, though, right now for this crowd that's left is the young kid here. He's got him moving down the field and heading to pay dirt, and he's making some things happen. And so the, the buzz will be when they leave. Did you? What do you think? What do you think about the quarterback well, position? Here's a question, though. Does this, does this stir unnecessary controversy? In Morgantown and around this area? Well, or is it is it necessary? Yeah, I mean, he shows potential. I, th I think you you have to look at against whom he's playing. And, you know, is it the second team in there now? They're playing a little bit different defensively. It's easier circumstances now. I know my first couple of years, I did some mop up duty, and yeah. it was easy yeah. stuff. And it looked good in stats. Yeah, it yeah. did. But take no nothing away from him. This kid is, has done some nice things. Went for the deep ball to Nastasi, incomplete. That stops the clock with 155 remaining. Third down and two. West Virginia down, 31. You look into the eyes of Scott McBrien. Craig, they have three redshirt freshman quarterbacks who they think have a chance, along with McBrien, of being very competitive. One of them is Jared Hostetler, the nephew of Jeff Hostetler. That name uh, should ring the bell. And off Terrence Johnson. Loose football picked up. And it's a track meet. It's a track meet. Buchanan. 77 yards. Turnovers a killer. And Miami's defense has made the Mountaineers pay and pay dearly all afternoon. How about a defense scoring three times today? Two on the interceptions and one on the scrape out there. And a touchdown by Buchanan, who comes with a speedy reputation, and he didn't have to turn on the burners there. You know, a team who had a great defensive uh, stand a week ago, Mississippi State against Brigham Young, who came with three defensive touchdowns. And we'll see them next week in Starkville. Right. Extra point is up and the chip shot good. Was it blocked? That one was blocked, yeah. Boy, it came right at me and I looked down at the sheet and uh, it was uh, it was blocked on its way up. Well, it was headed to the center of the upright. It just didn't quite make it there. And, and they've had some problems there this year. So the score stands 47-10 with a minute 38 remaining. I don't remember the last time that a defense scored three times. Now let's see what happens here. Poor snap. Doesn't help the timing. And well, you talk about crashing in high. Wasn't really the LeVar leap, <laughs> but it was effective nonetheless. Well, Buchanan's over there telling um, his teammates how it was done. Only a sophomore, Lehigh, Florida, 47-10, Canes. No Butch. 
had a lot of questions about this team. You know, they have not played at the Orange Bowl since the opener against McNeese State. They still got to play on the road next week at Rutgers, and they're not back until October 7th against Florida State. I mean, that's five weeks away from your home turf. Well, I think they had something to prove. They were unsuccessful on the road the last time out at Washington, and I think he said, guys, we're going into hostile territory again, and we better be ready to play. You mentioned the Florida State game. There it is on the 7th. Virginia Tech a little bit later and ending up with BC, but they're playing Virginia Tech and Florida State at home. John Terry, three yards deep. Oh, crashed at the 14. For an update on Nebraska, Iowa, here's Tim Brando. All right, Craig, let's check in on number one. Eric Crouch to Matt Davison here in all five touchdown passes. Time Steve Taylor's record for touchdown tosses. Huskers struggle early, but the uh, corn fed and hand spanked number one team is still just that. <laughs> did he say five touchdown passes? I believe he did. Wow. I believe he did. Well, the sea of red. Frank Solich is looking to throw the ball more. I had them in the Fiesta Bowl last year when they dominated a very good Tennessee team. And that really was one of the things that propelled them to preseason number one. But he told me, I'm going to throw the football more and we're going to throw it better. 134 left here in Morgantown. First and 10 at the Mountaineer 14 yard line. And some cute, uh, confusion along the far side. It looks like, uh, well, that, that's a player or an official that may have uh, taken it's a, a Miami. stumble. Yeah, I think it's a Miami player. That's number 46 for the Hurricanes. Jimenez, is it? Yeah. From the 14 yard line, Brian, handoff. Big hole up the middle. And wrapped up at the 46. Today's player of the game, presented by Solomon Smith Barney, is Reggie Wayne of Miami. Seven receptions, 127 yards, all-time Miami receiver leader. Watching December when Sol Solomon Smith Barney presents the CBS Sports College Football Player of the Year Award Show. I mean, Dorsey had a tremendous game. Well, yeah, you overruled our producer down there. I think Steve Shear wanted to go with Dorsey, and you didn't let me vote. Didn't I? I would, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know what? you I, forgot. I tell you what, I should have let Steve maybe have the It's his birthday today. Is it really? 40, 41. 41. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, and it's been a happy day here for Dorsey and company, and you could certainly build the case that Kenny Dorsey could have been the player of the game. I know that uh, when he goes back home, he'll be very happy on that plane ride, and he'll also, Craig, think about what if, just what if I had responded this way to the pressure out at Washington? Yeah, it was a better team he played, and there was a, a little bit more of a, a crowd distraction there. But the, if he had made the decisions and executed the way at Washington that he did today, this team could be undefeated in the top five. With Brian under center on second down and eight. Final seconds, they pitch it outside. Hurricanes try to spread it out to the 42. McMillan, the ball carrier. He slid out of bounds as they also will reset the chains. First down stops the clock with 15 ticks left. On a long afternoon for West Virginia, the fans packed it in with high hopes, and there are a few loyal remaining. Actually saw Butch with a smile. You did see yeah. Butch with a smile. It was, it, you, it, had it, to, you had to be looking, though. It officially came with six seconds to go. And that will be the final play here in Morgantown. So for Dean Blevins, this is Craig Bullerjack saying so long for Mountaineer Field, where our final score is Miami 47, West Virginia 10. Next Saturday, the Home Depot College Football, you will see Big East clash as Virginia Tech takes on BC or battle in the SEC as Florida tangles with Mississippi State.
Tomorrow, it's the NFL on CBS with doubleheader action, all beginning with the NFL today. Check your local listings. Forty-seven ten, the final. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.